Hey, John. Howdy. Good. How you been? I've been good. Good. It's good to see you. Never seen you in a while. Well, I've been to a lot of places. Make mats. Maybe uh, I'm planning on San Marcos next year. Yeah, uh, you there. got any plans to come down to uh, Model Palooza in uh, October? No. no, no, we won't be down that way. Um, we're going to, the only shows we're going to hit is the local shows. Uh, we've got the, the local Marietta show and then uh, yeah. Aniston, Ala Aniston, Alabama uh, in April. Um, Huntsville, Alabama is on the 27th, basically in a couple of weeks, but we're probably not going to, uh, we're probably not going to make that one. Um, hey, Ben. Doesn't look there like he's go. on yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Dave. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Doing all right. Good. Am I coming hey, in good? Pluth, this is uh, John Alger. John Alger, Ben Pluth. I don't know if you guys know each other, so excuse the. Uh, oh. No. If you do, pardon the, the uh, introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, Dave and I were in Three Rivers IPMS together a long, long ago. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, that was uh, was twenty two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I, I've you know, been gone from there a long time. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I was. Uh, I was on Facebook earlier today, and hey, how you doing, Cole? How you doing, brother? Uh, I was on Facebook earlier today, and it had those things about like, like child stars and where are they now type deal. Oh, and yeah, I'm looking yeah, at, yeah. I'm looking at the pictures now of these child stars, and I'm thinking like, like that movie, like in my mind, I'm like that movie just came out. I'm like, how are these people like adults and in their 30s and 40s now? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so it's crazy how the time has gone. <laughs> yeah, we're we're a bunch of old farts. That's it. <laughs> uh, so what we're gonna do is it's gonna be just a little bit of informal chat uh, for a few. Um, I know Gordon is. Uh, Gordon's working on getting his sound his sound fixed, and we'll see how many other people uh, join on. But uh, as posted, um, what this is going to be is uh, it's it, you know a discussion about uh, kinetics forty eight scale prowler. Um, you know the obviously there's a lot of stuff out there on the kit already. Um, you know the, there's there's a couple of YouTube videos, there's a couple of reviews. Obviously, a bunch of models, a bunch of modelers have built it. And, you know, they've posted on build uh, progress on the various forums and on Facebook itself. Um, there's reviews and whatnot. And however, most of those are now, of course, this is collectively like our discussion about this kit. But what I want to do is try to get, like, as I put in the introduction, I kind of want to get input from different modelers all at the same time about the kit. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, you know, maybe ask questions about it. Um, I've built seven of these things already. So <laughs> I, I can, I can actually build it without the instructions. Um, it's, it, it, I, I recognize pretty much like all the parts and where they go. I know which, what the problem areas are. Uh, but it's also an opportunity uh, you guys can mention uh, aftermarket that you're aware of that may be for the kit. If you've built one, if you've started one, if you've worked on one, uh, you know, mention the problem areas that, that you had uh -oh. with the kit. Davis uh, frozen. What was that, John? And Davis got was frozen. <laughs> I'm frozen? 
Well, <laughs> he's back. Okay. He's, well, maybe. <laughs> Dave Dave appears yeah. to be having bandwidth uh, problems. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you appear to be the only one that freezes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not that's not good. <laughs> um, I've got dang I, I've got like all my bars on my laptop and my video is nice and nice and clear yeah you're coming in clear I a second guess ago just... showing your signal bounce from like 3 to 1 now it's a solid 3 I'm using the app on my phone so I don't know how much different it looks from a laptop or desktop you're looking good. Rich, how you doing? Jay, how you doing today? Going on. Yep. All right. Am I am I coming in clear now? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. Let's wait for. Uh, so we got Rich coming up on video here. So I'll be the newbie then for the that kit being built because I have yet to build the the kinetic version of the the prowler. Oh really? So which uh, which kit have yeah. you built? I built the monogram a number of years ago, and I have it's like the kinetic one in the stash, but I also have uh, about three of the monogram ones still in the stash as well. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Rich, I got a few of those. Same? I got a few of those too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh I unfortunately have my fair share. Um I am I have two of the kinetics and about four of the monograms. Just uh haven't gotten around to quite a bit of the Edward and and, and aftermarket stuff. I just haven't gotten around to, to doing it. Unfortunately it's racing season, so <laughs> <laughs> I had a uh, hey Dave question yeah question for you Dave yeah <laughs> the uh, uh, the uh, prowler at the uh, Hickory Museum yep you you uh, any plans for doing any decals for that guy I actually have photos of that aircraft when it was active um, several Marines that were that were with the squadron at the time uh, have sent me the photos that they had. The, the only weird thing is every picture that that was sent to me, the Marines took real good high resolution close-up shots of the marking on the side. The problem is yeah, every single but you don't know where they are. <laughs> Is at a every single one of them is at an angle. Not one of them is looking directly at it. So they're very high uh -huh. range, they're close up, but they're at just that weird angle that drawing it correctly is, you know, it's it's been yeah. a bit of a challenge. Um right. Yeah. But, well, I got some photos of the one I took at Hickory with all the uh, shall we say special markings on it? <laughs> all the all the signatures and whatnot. Yeah, 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 all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll send you those if I still got your email. Okay, I've um, I've discovered that in uh, changes between uh, computers, I've lost some emails. So. If I don't have yours, I'll ring your bell for it. <laughs> so, but it's, that's also plastered all over the all over the, the Facebook page as well. Um, and I'm sure if you yeah. did a Google search for flying Linux, you'll find it. I'm I'm not that hard to find. Um, <laughs> I didn't so, figure. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> so who has actually built the kinetic prowler other than myself? I've attempted to do it, uh, you know, got uh, basically I shoehorned in the uh, the Aries cockpit into it and everything. Uh -huh. And uh, that's about as far as I got and I gave up on. <laughs> now, did you have 
did you have the original kit with the folding wings or did you have yep. the later kit? Uh, it's the original one with the folding wings and I didn't want the wings folded. So I have to, had to build a internal structure inside the wing to keep them, uh, you know, to support it when it was straight, you know, basically used uh, some uh, brass uh, square, you know, rectangular brass uh, rod to, uh, you know, glue to one side of it and basically to stabilize it. So the wings will not uh, droop or bend or anything when you put them together. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's at the point where it's, you know, paint the cockpit and start assembling it, but it just wound up falling, uh, falling to the wayside and it's still sitting in a box under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> like the other prowler. Yeah. Slightly forgot. Yeah. Well, I know, I know the original kit had some issues with the wings. Um, the, the inner wing on the bottom kind of this part right here uh, was tooled really wonky. So when it, when it would get inserted into the fuselage, instead of sitting straight like this, it was forced up at an angle like this. And hmm. I mean, you had to seriously carve away a bunch of the material right here just to get the wing to sit level. Um, it was subsequently fixed on the next boxing. And then over a period of time, the original boxing had its wing replaced with, with the new wing. So anybody that sees this, if you've got the original kit with the wings, with the outer wings as separate pieces, uh, I believe you can contact Kinetic and they'll send you the updated wing sprue. Um, hmm. So if if you get a kit and the outer wings are separate, you have the old kit and fitting the wings are gonna be a pain in the ass. Um, obviously, if okay. your wings come uh, one piece like this, this is the new uh, fixed tooling uh, wing. Uh, some of the other Here issues- Here we go. Yeah. Uh Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Good Lord, that's a lot of supports. <laughs> it won't back. <laughs> it can, uh, let's see. See? You need my little, you need my little corrected, my little correct. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've also got the, uh, uh, let's see, uh, the marking on there, what needs to be carved away. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Hey, Dave, does that um, insert for the the wing fold there, it's like a, also work on the early kit, or is it for just the late? You talking about this one here? The, yeah. The, the, the wing fold, the corrected wing fold? Yeah. Um, so I've never had the original kit. Actually, that's not true. Okay. I had the original kit. Um, I kind of fought it. I, I think I, I sold it off. I get, or gave it away one of the two. Um, so I don't know the, the space on the top of the wing, you know, this part right here, this mm -hmm. literally drops right in and replaces the, okay. the kit part that goes there. I don't know what this space is like on the original kit. So like okay. once you put the, the two okay. have the two wings together, this might not be the same size. So I, I can't I can't guarantee okay. that this is gonna fit the way it fits this one. Uh okay. Because I think I have the original kit in my stash and some of the other things it's like I think like Richard Van Zant there was saying it's like uh, he tried to shoehorn in the Aries cockpit, and I think I have one of those Aries cockpits uh, for the kit that I have on my shelf. And then uh, um, I don't know if it's GT resin or if it was the old um, uh, um, old from 
cutting edge that was uh, uh, copied by um, Rhino models for the intakes. Uh, that wasn't copied. <laughs> wasn't? It wasn't okay. copied. That's I I I know the gentleman Homer. behind Rhino, and that is okay. It is it is uh, that's he 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 retooled those he retooled those intakes. Yeah, those okay. aren't copied I, cutting okay. edge. Okay. No, I don't remember which ones I have, but it's like uh, I was wondering whether or not it's like the intakes are a worthwhile investment for that kid or not. They are. Um, the the kid intakes. So all the prowlers that I've built were were built as as gifts. Um, I've done. I did five. For VMA Q2, I did one uh, for VMA Q3, and then I did another one for another Marine from VMA Q2 later on. The, the things that we look for as modelers when we build kits, like if I was to take any of the seven prowlers that I built for these Marines and take them to a contest, like the modelers would have a field day tearing, you know, tearing the kits apart, you know, it's, but the Marines are looking at them and they're like, holy shit, that's my plane. And you got this and you did that. And you added this and you added that. And, you know, yeah. so they're not concerned about all the stuff that we're concerned about as modelers. Uh, they're just looking at the plane that they flew or the plane that they modeled. So exactly. I have actually yet to to go to town on a kinetic prowler. Um, it is definitely on my list though. Uh, there's, I've got, I've got the wing fold inserts. Um, I'm working on uh, wheels. Uh, I knocked out the hub, the, the wheel hub, um, like in a couple of days. And that was a few months ago. And I've, I've just got the wheel hub. I haven't actually done the tire yet. <laughs> so I need, I need to get off my ass and finish that. Um, I would like to do some stuff for the cockpit. Uh, I've got, I've got masks available for it. Uh, I've got two decal sheets out for it. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I'd love to do for the kit. Cause I'd really like to, build one for myself and kind of go all out. Um, but uh, hey, real quick, if you guys want to chat amongst yourselves, I'm going to work on my speaker end here. Right now I've got the sound coming out of a stereo that I've got off to the side and it's kind of messing me up. So I'm going to see about getting that turned off and getting a different speaker set up. So give me just a second while I try to take care of that real fast. Oh. Yeah, I'm slow on uh, modern aircraft. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. We hear you. Can anyone hear me now? Oh, my. Let's... What? <laughs> All right. Can anyone hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Good. Yep. Good. Okay. That's much better. Man, that that sound coming off the stereo off to my right was like really messing me up. There was. So like, here's one. Yep. Oh, there you go. That's. <laughs> there's, there's the other. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh. Well, I got two. Oh, you know the the cool thing about. That's the first sheet that you put up there, uh, 4815, that one there. Mm -hmm. So the VMA Q2 option, uh, the one there in the center, and then with the uh, with the jester on the tail, mm -hmm. well, the squadron sent me the reference photos for that prowler while they were deployed to cutter uh, in support of inherent resolve. 
and I had the decal I sheet. I had the artwork drawn up, the decal sheet done, and printed by microscale before they got home from their deployment. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, a while ago, um, I was in touch with you um, for sixteen twelve four two, the showbird. Uh huh. I was. I sent you a lot of reference stuff. I jumped onto one of uh, the VMA one pages and you were you were asking questions and I got you a lot of stuff um the one that I haven't seen yet is honestly it's my least favorite bird <laughs> um that we had while I was in it's when they repainted it and put the 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 uh the realistic flame skull and all of that I haven't seen a good version of that yet have you, about you know the, talk about with the black football right yeah okay it's got the entire black tail I've got that artwork drawn um, and you're talking about the one that had the airbrushed skull. The was it yep. the airbrushed skull up on the on the football? Yeah, it was the airbrushed skull, and it was just the back two panels, pretty much. It didn't go far forward on the football. I I actually have that. If I'm not mistaken, the panel, the port side panel of that bird is in the officers club uh, there yeah. at Cherry Point. Um, I've got. I was I was actually stationed at Cherry Point. Uh, when that bird was painted like that. And I've got complete walk arounds of that bird. I've got the artwork drawn. Uh, uh, that is on that and, and several other prowlers are on another sheet that I'm working on right now. So nice. Well, uh, that's funny because I was I was in the squadron at the time. I was handling the painting of that. I was in the airframe shop. I so, probably we probably we talked. probably crossed paths. Cause I was that guy that I was there every weekend. Cause I, my family was here in Atlanta and I was living there in the barracks on base. And on the weekends, when I wouldn't come home, I was, I was either at the, I was either on the Harrier side or on the Q side taking pictures. I had my tape measure. The Marines looking at me like I was on crack. <laughs> like, when, I was like, when we, uh, <laughs> we were, when we painted that bird, funny story was, uh, so sixteen twelve four two is the bird that for some reason I just like that bird was it just got to the squadron they they actually called it the red dragon because it had originally a red red canopies red football okay. then they went they did they painted the canopies black almost immediately because they didn't like it it looked kind of goofy so we went ahead and we did that you know the only part that you're going to grab with your hands we're going to go ahead and paint that black right before we go to the desert. <laughs> So we, we painted it black and that's the, that's the, 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 just the original uh, showbird. And it was like that it was zero four for a while. And then we transferred it over to zero one. And there's like little, little things where you can actually timeline a picture just based off of whether it was zero four or zero one. Yeah. And then all the way until it got painted again, it had a four with a lightning bolt through it on the backside of the football. I on I, the coffee. Actually, I think I have pictures of that one too. Uh, but uh, that bird, we got in trouble because we wanted to paint it, and the uh, the fire chief kept coming around. So me, my gunny, and four other uh, corporals and lance corporals went to third or went to third shift, and we were painting that for the Cherry Point Air Show. And that's we got that done. It rolled out. It was still tacky when it rolled out for the Cherry Point Air Show. <laughs> <laughs> the CO comes in, and we're all standing along the tail. No cranials, no nothing. We're all toasting. Have, have like we all got beers in our hand. He walks in. He looks up at us. He goes, "It's done." We said, "It's done, sir." He goes, "Awesome. Get off my bird and get it outside." <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a trip. So you know, you know, uh, Tenario, right? Mass Sergeant Tenario. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's good people. He's the one that sent me the pictures of of that bird when they were in cutter uh, yep. uh him and uh well he retired lieutenant colonel uh larson uh but they sent me like I said, they they were they were awesome i'll tell you there, there's been a couple squadrons uh in the marine corps uh vmfa 122 back in 2008 they were at al assad and and I was on active duty at the time too, so I was kind of, I was like doing stuff for my my little side gig, you know, while on active duty. So it was a little, you know, a little sketchy. But 
a lot of Marines knew why I was doing what I was doing, and they saw they let it slide. What's going on, Andrew? What's going on, Whitey? How you doing, brother? Good. What's up, man? Good. You doing good? Hey, what's going on? <sighs> hey, who's the Takamo guy? <laughs> that would be me. Yeah, all right. Are you are you Takamo? I was an E6A and Bravo guy, but, um, you know, obviously I see the 130. I'm, there. I'm old Takamo. <laughs> Are you coming out to PAX at the end of the month for the, uh, they're having a yes, reunion? I, yes, I are. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Um, I think I'm going to be out of town the days. Man, I think I fly back in on that Saturday of the reunion, but I wanted to, I wanted to get there for the, you know, they're dedicating the, uh, museum section. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm on the board. So. So depending on what time I get back, I'll, I'm going to shoot down there for that. Have, have you registered? No, I didn't because, like I said, I'm out of town that week. So oh, okay, I'm not, not okay. positive I'll be back. You know, so all right. Of, what you know, what's your what's your name? Andrew White. Andrew White. Okay. Well, we'll look for you. All, all right, man. I'll I'll, I'll I'll be around. Uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dave. I came in and hijacked you there for a sec. No, we're... no, no. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're. Uh... It's so often you see a Takamo guy, man. That's rare. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there aren't a lot of us. <laughs> well, Andrew's I, known as Whitey, or, or amongst us, uh, less politically correct, the cracker. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get excited anything, anything Prowler related. So I. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um. So, again, now, Andrew, have you ever built? Have you ever worked on or built a kinetic prowler? No, but it's definitely one I want to get. Okay. Um, I know the first round of them that came out had some issues with, uh, you know, so, so I've, I've always been hunting around for that one with the uh, Japanese flag. I, I don't know what VAQ squadron it is, but then they have the, the latest release that comes with the, uh, with the spotting dolly. So yeah. I'm going to try to grab that one. Now, it's funny because we were actually discussing that earlier, the wing issue. And the, yeah. if you if you ever happen to get a kit secondhand, and and let's say the and the wings are are the outer the outboard wings are separate from the inboard wings, that's the kit with the jacked up wing that doesn't fit properly. And it's okay. This area right here on the bottom side, the way it's tooled is when it slides into the can the cut the fuselage it forces the wing up like this so you have to do some major sanding and cutting away on the bottom of the wing in order for it to get to sit properly and they fixed it when they did the the one piece wing uh what we had talked about earlier is raymond actually went back and started including the what the corrected wing and all the subsequent releases now, of course, okay. like any kit, you know, you can't realistically get them all. So there's probably still kits floating out there that have the, the jacked up wing. Um, yeah. Now, can you still, with that one piece wing, does it still have the option to fold them? Yeah. The, the difference is where the original kit, obviously, it, it had parts to where you could extend them and fold them. This one has the same parts and you just have to actually cut the wings apart and fold them. So gotcha. you've basically got like the same amount of work going two different directions, whether you have the old wing or the new wing. Uh, yeah. The problem with the old wing is you just have to do a lot of surgery down in this area in order to get it to sit correctly. So you actually have more work to do on the, on the old kit. Um, gotcha. Hey, hey, Dave, can I uh, jump in real quick? It's like I'm um, looking at the lineage of the kits um i see uh it's 48022 the the earliest it is kit. it is okay and then the next one is 48044 is that the one that they actually did the the change to yeah so so okay. 022 is the only boxing of the kit the, the original release that had the messed up wing now again okay. keep in mind that they went back and that kit is still available. But if if you look on those, so the later releases of that boxing 
and that kit number 48022. On mm -hmm. the box top itself, right in the middle on the right-hand side in yellow text, it says that it includes the new wing, okay? So obviously, right. if your box is 48022 and does not have that text, you're more than likely going to have the kit with the old wing. If it has that text or if you have right. any right. other boxing, you've got the new wing. Uh Okay. So yeah, because I'm seeing it's like uh, on one of the one of the for sale sites. It's like uh, you got boxings zero two two, zero four four, zero seven five, and uh, one twelve are your boxings. Yeah, one is one's the dark prowler. One is yeah. uh, VMA Q two boxing. I can't remember the markings that came in the in the third in the third release. And that one is let's see. Yes. Got it. Find it. Now there is it's the one another... with the sundowner tail. Okay. Now there is gonna be yeah. another boxing, I believe, next year that if if everything stays as planned, uh, I'll be doing the decals for. So uh, Raymond and I discussed that um, a little bit at the Nats. And then prior to that, uh, as most of you know, I did the, the decals for the ATARS F-18 kit. Um, so we've been discussing about maybe doing uh, marine markings for an, another release of the Prowler. Uh, so hopefully that will that will pan out. Um, you should. You, you won. <laughs> you no, know, you know what? You, I, I'm like, so my dilemma is because a lot of the artwork I already have drawn. Okay, and the dilemma is, do I do I design that decal sheet for Raymond to include in the kit, or do I release that? on my own on, under my label. So it, it's that, that that fine line of, of which artwork uh, to, to give to Raymond. Um, one that I may actually do for that kit is uh, Q Forsberg bird uh, that Tenario designed that had the, uh, the full color Seahawk along the whole uh, length of the, of the fuselage spine. Um, it was- okay. blue and that, that, like an emerald green on the bottom and it went from just behind that, that aft canopy all the way to the to the rudder um so and then on the is star, that, is that the an older side, what was that is that a high vis scheme then you yeah. Going, yeah yeah high vis scheme and on the, the star, you know, side of the rudder it has a silhouette of a flag raising at Iwo Jima and on yep. the on the port side of the rudder, it's got the Eagle Globe and Anchor. So I do remember that one. Yeah. So, uh, do you know if anybody, if, or if maybe you've done it, did <laughs> have you seen anybody do the, uh, the, the we called it the multicam, the digital pattern one that they did? I, I the that. Too. For, yeah. For, so I have, dude, I have like 200 pictures of that bird. Uh, yeah. almost every square inch of that camouflage pattern and my biggest dilemma has been how to design that to where it could be easily applied as a decal um i photographed that bird when you guys got back from a deployment at el Assad, or when q2 got back from el Assad in 08 and i was there on the flight line as the birds came in um the squadron you know went on a 96 right afterward and I spent that whole weekend in the hangar and I photographed every inch of that bird. Um, it, it's on my list. And we made fun of them so bad because their show bird looked like it had army camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> it was relentless. Now, see, if you wanted to have some fun with one, one of your releases, um, you could get you don't need to do anything high res with it, but the bunny silhouettes. 
Q2 painted those bunny silhouettes on every damn thing they could get their hands on. They one. used to put, they would tag them on our, on our, on our tanks, on the, on the tails of our tanks. They would tag them all over the place. And, and they would, that was their goal is before we deployed, like if we, like when we were, uh, they replaced us in, um, I think it was Afghan. They replaced us and, uh, we were taxiing out and I was vigilant that I made sure that they're not tagging our tanks. And as every bird turned to taxi out, I saw it on the backside of the football. Like, yeah, on the, the on the beer can. On the, the <laughs> after the beer no, can in the football. Above it. Just above Just it. Because right the... yeah, I've got yeah. pictures. I've got pictures of all those, too. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm saying that, that's something neat that you could include in one of these kits. It kind of gives you just something different. Because Q2, then that damn bunny. Jesus. <laughs> you need to do a zap, uh, a zap decal sheet. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, were they doing that after the bunny went away? Even were they still? Oh, yeah, yeah, they did that. Keeping that so, legacy alive. What yes. what they did was um, they they were the prowlers for a little or the panthers for a little while. Then they yeah. went to the death jester. When they went to the death jester, even the murals and stuff that they painted in like Iraq, Afghanistan, and stuff like that would always have a bunny incorporated in it. Usually, it was the death jester with a dead rabbit in its mouth. Yeah, uh, but they kept the, they kept, they would keep little stencils of the Playboy Bunny around, and they would spray that on everything. You left something behind, it getting bunny. It was there, there was there was one jet that I saw that had the death gesture, and then it had the bunny ears coming off of it. Uh, yep. <laughs> hey Jay, Jay, hold yeah. up, hold up the the four eight zero zero seven, the big sheet that I did. Yeah, let me grab it. I recall going. I had to get down to uh, Cherry there you go. Time to yeah. fix it. Hey, okay. So look at the Charlie Yankee. Yeah, so, the C one shaped like the bunny. Yep, right here. Gotcha. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they 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 might have tried to they might have tried to take the bunny away, but that bunny never died. Yeah, that it was it was everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they. Uh, it was everything. If it was bolted down, it was getting a bunny on it eventually. Uh, they um and and we'd have back and forth with them like the one time we actually kidnapped Charlie Yankee. Um, the the actual rabbit, which is actually in the Marine Corps Museum now, where one of them was. We we kidnapped the original one, and uh, it was just you you'd do all kinds of stuff. You'd find things, and they they would kidnap anything. We kidnapped Charlie Yankee. We'd lose the first lieutenant. Like it was just, <laughs> it was back and forth. <laughs> no. Hey Dave, I got yeah. a good uh, Tacoma Marine story for you. All right. Go ahead, John. <laughs> Andrew will like this. <laughs> we were. Uh, this was uh, when I was with VQ three in Guam. We went to the Philippines and uh, rolled into QB Point. And the Marines uh, provided a perimeter guard around our aircraft uh, when we did that. And this private, I don't even think he was a corporal, uh, kept asking everybody about our aircraft because he'd never seen a C-130 quite like ours. <clears throat> I'm sure he'd seen a few but he didn't see any with wingtip pods or drogue cones or anything like that. So he kept asking questions and we kept telling him, you know, the reason you're here is this is a classified aircraft and we can't tell you anything. Uh, <clears throat> well, he made the mistake of encountering our flight engineer. And so the flight engineer told him, since you were going to be potentially guarding this aircraft with your life, you might want to know what you're guarding. He says, see those cones back there? <clears throat> they, this is a top secret nuclear powered aircraft and you don't want to get near those cones because, you know, there's possibly radiation leaking out of them. And, uh, but you're not allowed to tell anybody what I just told you. Well, we checked into the BOQ and 
we're uh, get up in our rooms, change our clothes, and we're going down. And we're having a couple of beers, and this incident at the bars here is, is talking about this. Uh, you hear about this top secret nu nuclear powered aircraft down on the ramp? <laughs> It didn't take long. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that Lance Corporal Underground, man. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff travels fast. <laughs> so here's one for you guys. I uh I, I need some suggestions. Huh? I had a uh, back right before the pandemic started, I had had a, a minor, not a minor surgery, but I had a, I had a surgery, so I was going to be out a little while, and I decided to buckle down, and I was going to get the, the kinetic kit and some some aftermarket stuff for it. Coincidentally enough, that it, when it came in, the box was damaged, but it and not before it got to sit in my uh, sit in my barn for probably I don't know, probably out there a month, because right as everything was kicking off with the pandemic, I happened to get this this package in from Wuhan, China. So I get it in. The damn thing is smashed to hell. And here's the box. So I don't know yeah. how bigger that bad boy is, but it's pretty. It was pretty smashed. The wings are bent, but not too bad. This is my problem. Oh, Ooh. the tails are just a little more than gone on these. It's both of them too. It got it. Hey. You got any leftover hand grenades? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, hey yeah. super blue and sandy. Like, it's pretty wonky. I was eyeballing it, thinking I was like, man, I'm like, I know I could find out where Franken Prowler was chopped up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's all I can think of. So I got a good tip for that uh, to fix that. Um, go to Sally's Beauty Supply and get some nail acrylic powder okay. okay nail acrylic powder mixed with super glue mm -hmm. in bonds it's like uh plastic harder than you believe it's almost like the equivalency of like pouring uh like concrete cement into that part and so it's not going to break free so uh, if you if you're able to manipulate that part back straight again like taping it to a piece of uh piece of glass or something like that yeah or tape it to your bench in a way that's like you're able to like just tack the outside with some super glue in a few spots and then flip it over after it's like the super glue is dried and then yeah. pour in the ca glue with um and then mix in um the acrylic powder that will hold that plastic there and keep it from buckling yeah because not only did they they, I mean, they crushed the hell out of it. So it's not just, it's not just, yeah. been, it's like it, the whole tail is, is, is angled up. So I, yeah. I thought, I thought about a couple different options, like getting some like maintenance guys, taking the rudder off, you know, doing all kinds <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> it's like, hey, shoot me. Uh, when this is done or, or you can even do it now, uh, send me your address. Your mailing address through email. Um, mm -hmm. I've got like twenty five of these kits, uh, and they were all donated by Kinetic. Uh, they're bag kits. They're not in boxes. There's no decals. There's no instructions. Um, mm -hmm. But they were given to me, so I, I'll I can very easily send you a replacement uh, for the whole kit. That's that's not a problem. So I'll, just send me your address and I'll put it in a box and and, and send it off to you. So awesome. April, that, it, that'll that'll be the whole kit. <laughs> it, yeah, it. I mean, April, it, honestly, <laughs> it would be pointless for me to just send you the fuselage halves because then I would have wings and the rest of the kit that wings and everything else. So I'll just I'll just send you a replacement kit. You've already got the box. You've got the decals and the instructions. I'll just send you a replacement. Uh, I got I ain't gonna lie. I got I I got so many of your stuff be for for just various kits. Like I got I got three or four monograms sitting up there because my 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 goal was to have. I wanted to make the squadron for oh. when I was in. Like I wanted the each bird, and uh, 
I got 16, 12, 4, 2. I got all my all my pictures. And actually, there's quite a few that that I deployed with that you've managed to put into the kits for <laughs> other aircraft because they, they were, you know, same time frame. And truthfully, like we passed around birds left and right. Oh, yeah. So, like, I mean, the fact that 16, 12, 4, 2 lasted as long as it did in the squadron with me was unbelievable. It was the only aircraft I had the whole time. And it, it made it, it like, it makes it so that I could just take them <laughs> and make my own, use the Banshee <laughs> stuff and splat them on over. Well, like I said, the offer is there. So if you decide you want a replacement kit, just let me know and I'll plop it in the yeah. mail for you. I got, I got no problems doing that. Um, I appreciate that. I've, I've uh, built let me see something. several of these damn kits. Uh, so Here's something else. Kind of neat. I don't know if I ever showed this to anybody over here, but uh, when I was in Afghanistan, I I painted this. Oh, nice. What's cool about this painting, though, is let me get so you can see it a little better. Is uh, the aircraft was our hangar queen. Okay. So this is five nine five eight four. All right. Uh, it was a Q two transfer bird at the time. So when we deployed, we had one go down. We took this bird from them. What's cool about it is the uh, what I ended up doing was because it's acrylic and I was deployed. I couldn't didn't have much time, didn't have a lot of shading or shading materials. It's actually shaded. The entire thing is shaded with uh, carbon from the aircraft, from the exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. That's, and, no, that's awesome. So, that's absolutely awesome. Right there, and then because it was my last deployment, the whole squadron signed the back of it. Oh, awesome. That's, that's cool. awesome. So, and I got everybody on there, top to bottom, as many as I can get. So, yeah, I got – actually, you might know – you might remember Langley. Stats yeah. aren't Langley. He was, he was there for a while. But, yeah, that one's pretty cool. I was, that's one of my more favorite prowler items. I got a couple of pieces and parts. But... Yeah. Fell off. They, they, fell, they fell off a truck. <laughs> you know, it's funny. For the longest time, uh, I had I had a jar. I had I had two I had two model master uh, paint jars, and one of them had a, it was about a quarter full of hydraulic fluid, and the other one had a little a little bit of jet fuel in it. And mm -hmm. what I always wanted to do is I wanted to build a model. And then I actually wanted to use real hide fluid and fuel and put on the display base so it kind of so it had that smell. And, <laughs> well, well, the problem was I could never actually finish models. So I just finally got to the point one day I'm like, all right, I've been carrying around these stupid jars of freaking hide fluid and fuel for like years. So I, <laughs> they actually just ended up going in the trash. <laughs> so I was like, sometimes I'm like, shit, I should have kept on of I should have held on to those things. Um, I was gonna say, Dave, you you put that on your model; it's gonna melt a hole in it. No, no, no! I wasn't gonna put it on the model. I wanted to put it like so uh, on the base. Though. Yeah, so somewhere on the base. Um, in fact, a product that I'm actually a product that I'm actually uh, working on right now that I'm designing in Fusion is actually the the drip pans uh, to put underneath the aircraft. Um, dude, that's, it's one that's of those things. It's one of those things that when a bird's on the deck, there's always every, drip pans on Every deck. squadron's got them. <laughs> yep, and yeah. nobody does drip pans. So I was like, dude, that would be yeah. like a real simple thing to design. You know, I'll sell them like I normally do all my other shit, like real cheap, you know, like maybe three or four drip pans for like six bucks. And is all you got to do is paint them up, weather them, and like literally just slide them underneath your model. Um, yeah. So the, the idea. Other, the so other thing that. Do like that. Like, like, think about like even like little HSUs or or like hydraulic servicing carts or yeah. Well, like, that that's what I was gonna say. That is one one of the things is yellow gear is hit and miss. You mm -hmm. know whether you can get it or whether it's the right era or right scale. You know, yeah. it's just you know uh, there's a little bit out there, but not a lot. Uh, and it's more for the Air Force, but not so much for the Navy. Or yeah. even if it, maybe uh, it's work stands. B one stands, B four stands. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. those things, man. I mean, I know if you're in prowl, you definitely use B four stands. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've also wanted to do jacks. Um, jacks, do, do, yeah, do man. Yeah. Jacks, you know, and 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 just your normal little hangar equipment. You know, the the things that you see around aircraft, like all the time, toolboxes, do flight line toolboxes. Uh, oh, little, yeah. Little, little oh, I don't know. Yeah. Little giants in, in with prowlers in the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah, we did. We had them. So we that's all we ever had on the bird was was those things. Yeah. But uh, NC8s and GTC85s, you know, that kind of stuff, you hardly ever see it in any scale. Yeah, and you figure also, like, like so for us, we used, because I was in 05 to 10, we had, um, I mean, the think about the Huffers and stuff like that that we had. We had newer Huffers at the time, so, like, they, the only ones you could find are these massive Huffers that were, like, for the, F, the F-14s and stuff. But like we ran that an NC ten, you know the little Nan carts or the forty twos and the thirty Alpha tugs, like yeah, like like you the, you can't find a proper tug for anything post <laughs> Vietnam, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, well, even even you know I was mostly seventies and eighties, and you know almost all of the yellow gear that's available is you know, like 85 and later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know it's, it's none of the early stuff is available. Yeah. Cause that's when you had Verlinden coming out with all that stuff is the late eighties, early, early nineties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and of course now with the, with the advent of all the 3d printing, I mean, that, that may be something that may be something I may, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm working on, I'm working on a gift for, uh, so, two twenty no five thirty three reached out to me a couple months ago to build another model for them, uh, for their guest of honor, uh, for the Marine Corps Ball uh, here in November. Now, I still haven't heard from them yet. I hope they don't pull another five thirty three like they did in January. Um, but to give a quick update on that, so. In October of last year, the squadron reached out to me to build a going away gift for Lieutenant Colonel Brubrecht, who was the outgoing commanding officer. Uh, and the, the change of command was, was going to be the early part of the year. So we exchanged, uh, I was text messaging and emailing a uh, captain in the squadron uh, for this project. Right around... Right around the end of October, November, I like all contact from the squadron just stopped. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, they were and they were they were deployed at the time. So I didn't think nothing of it. I, I was like, all right, you know, things change, plans change, you know, they're 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 overseas, they got, you know, mission first, all that, all that stuff. And uh didn't hear back from them. And so I didn't I didn't do anything with 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 the project. Because I was like, all right, maybe they changed their mind. So fast forward to January. All right. It's it's Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, and I think it's like the third or fourth of January. All right. I get a message from the captain basically saying, Hey, uh, you know. I sent a couple emails. I think I had the wrong email because they didn't go through. Um, I couldn't find your number, the whole nine yards. He's like, uh, we want to know if, you know, if if you still have the, the gift for the CO. And I'm like, well, like, I, you know, I, I haven't heard anything from you guys, so I haven't done anything. He's like, okay, well, because, the, the retirement, the change of command ceremony is is Friday. And I was like, Friday when? He's like, well, this Friday, the 7th. And I'm like, I'm like, dude. And he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, hey, don't worry about it. It's it's okay. You know, don't don't sweat it. Uh he says, you know, we'd still like to invite you to the change of command. And um, you know, if you know, you don't have to bring it, you know, just don't worry about it. I'm like, I'm like, all right, all right, no big deal. So we get off the phone and, and I, I go to Tanya 
and, and I and I tell her, you know, I was like, hey, so this is what happened. You know, the squad invited me Friday. And she's like, are you going to do it? And I'm like, there's like, there's no way. I was like, it's Tuesday. I was like, you know, I, and I got <laughs> ceremonies Friday. Like, you know, and she's like, okay. And then I was like, I, I, I no, I'm like, no, I can't. Dude, at 2.30 Friday morning. So I started that model. I started that model of an F-18 on Tuesday. And at 2.30 in the morning on Friday, I put the final pieces on that thing, took a couple hour nap, got up at five and drove my ass to Beaufort. And we were able to present the CO with that <laughs> model. So, but, oh. so they reached out to me again to build another model for their guest of honor for the Marine Corps Ball in November. And I'm like, okay, dude, I haven't heard from them in like another, it's been like two months since I last heard from them. And I'm like, all right, don't do this to me again. Like, y'all need to let me know like, like, if you want me to build this because I ain't going to pull another four-day event. Um, but here's, here's the cool thing with this one. If it goes through, this is actually for General Bolden. So, and they want an F-18 and a space shuttle. Uh, for those of you that don't know General Bolden, uh, he is a Marine Corps aviator and an astronaut, and he's 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 piloted the space shuttle. So they want an F-18 and a space shuttle on his plaque. And I'm like, all right, it's August. The Marine Corps ball is in November. Like, I need to hear from somebody, like, really, really soon. <laughs> Got it. Get out in front of it. Which, which, <laughs> which shuttle did he pilot? They didn't say. They haven't said yet. So, I don't, yeah. like, that. I, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm actually at the point where I might just, <laughs> I might just, Google that, just man. build a shuttle. I may just build a shuttle and build a Hornet and then start reaching out to them and be like, all right, is this happening or is this not happening? And one of two things will happen. I'll either put them on a display base and drive into Buford again, or I'll have an F-18B and a space shuttle to put in the display case. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> one or two things is going to happen. Um, but uh, hey, real quick, give me a second. Y'all chat amongst yourselves. I'm going to let the dogs out real fast, and and my my whiskey jar my whiskey jar is empty. So, right <laughs> and Andre's name again. Andre, yeah. Uh, where what what uh, VQ squadron were you in, and what did you do? I was in three. I was a real op. Ah, cool. Yeah, man. I was in. I was in three. We made the move from uh, Guam to Hawaii. Oh, okay. What'd you do? When, what were you? When were you in th three? Um, ninety four to ninety eight. Okay. Yep. So you know John Kilty. I know the name. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was my plane you know how, commander. You know how Takamo is. Yeah. Hey, what was the name of the commander? Crew, but then you don't yeah. know. You don't know about half the squadron because you're gone what? while they're home. What? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I was a nav. Okay. Yeah. But now, okay, but my right. story is I didn't start out as a nav. I was a pilot. Uh huh. I I. Uh, Earned my wings in 74. I got uh, stuck in the training command for two tours. In 79, I went to VA-174 to learn the A-7, and that didn't work out, and that caused me to become an NFO. And instead of keeping me in jacks to fly P-3s like I wanted, uh, they sent my ass to Guam. You know, you know how the Navy is. <laughs> so, anyway... Uh, but if you do show up at the reunion, uh, ask anybody for me. I am the uh, vice president of marketing okay. for TCVA, so I'll be running the uh, Tacomo store most days. All right. <laughs> now, a few months back, I you know, because I'm right here in PAX, and I um, oh okay, I shot an email to somebody I can't recall who asking like you know hey. For the display that you all are putting together for Tacma, or, or you know, do you want models displayed as part of it? And they said they had a modeler doing models. Would that happen to be you? Yeah, we we we've we've got some, and uh, I'm actually doing a restoration of the original ECX from Boeing. 
Um, and uh, that's just about done. Uh, that'll be going into the museum. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got a few models. Um, uh, did you send it to Vern? It might have been to Vern. Yeah, Vern Lockhausen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It might have been. Yeah, Vern, Vern and I were in three together. So, <laughs> yeah, I know Vern real well. <laughs> I have a so, 70 So, you're in PAX. You know Joe Hegedus, huh? Yeah, I know Joe. Joe's in our club. Yep. In fact, yeah. Joe lives right up the street from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've known Joe for years. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's funny. The neighborhood I live in is uh, four of us that live in the neighborhood. The yeah. Model club. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that's it. <laughs> That's actually pretty. Cool. Run, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know so weird. You know, for, if if I run out of something, I'll run up to Joe's house. You know, for, <laughs> I'll take, hey, you got a bottle of whatever, or you have a oh, hey, I, I'm looking for this decal, man. You know, <laughs> you know, and of course, in you know, and Dave knows uh, my other buddies, uh, Frildo, oh yeah, Ammo, and Darren. I mean, we all live within five ten minutes of each other. So I mean, nice. our, our club down here in Pax is really. Uh, uh, it, it it's a it's a large club and uh, everyone's right here mostly aviation guys too obviously i mean it's packed yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> well yeah yeah i mean everyone's retired something you know yeah. retired engineers or retired well uh, what dave was talking about the astronaut uh one of my uh students when i was in the training command uh, went to test pilot school, became an astronaut, flew three shuttle missions, and was NASA spokesman for a oh, while. Shit. Yeah, Bill Bill Reedy. Yeah, man. I mean, you got uh, yeah, all those guys. They're all around. They all they all come through here, man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, at least the Navy guys, the yeah. Navy and Marine guys, <laughs> hey, some hey, of the Dave. Air Force guys. <laughs> What's up, Ben? Hey, uh, what was the um, the guy's name uh, for the the general that you said uh, that it's retiring. Bolden. Bolden. Oh, hold Bolden. B O B O L D E N. General Bolden. Bolden. Oh. And he was the commander or the pilot of the shuttle. They told me he was the pilot. I mean, I, I'm going okay. off of what they told me. I haven't done any further research on that. Okay, because I got the list right here for. Uh, Space shuttle crews and uh, uh, time frames of when they launched and what STS mission they were. The Bolden, Bolden. Cool. Now, real quick, while Ben is doing that, so of course this thing was supposed to be about the kinetic prowler. And we talked about <laughs> almost everything, but so <laughs> about six different tangents. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, it is what it is, you know. So, but um, one of the things for for the vast majority of the kit goes together excellent. Um, of course, unless you have the the initial release with the jacked up wings. Okay, everything else fits like it. It goes together really, really well. Okay. The kit does not need nose weight. So for those of you out there that haven't built it yet, you know, you don't need to worry about nose weight. Uh, the Of the seven that I built, only one of them had nose weight. And that was the very first one that I, that I put together. And I put nose weight because I assumed it would need it. The second one, I forgot to put nose weight. And I was like, okay, well, this kind of sucks. I was like, all right, well, let me get it together. Let me figure out, you know, how it sits. That way I can determine how much weight I need to figure out, you know, to try to figure out how I'm going to put it back in the nose. I set it on its landing gear and it, it sat just fine. I was like, oh, well, maybe it doesn't. So the next ones I built didn't put anything in and they all sat on their wheels just fine. There's enough weight in the forward fuselage that, that basically offsets the weight of the tail. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Then, of course, if you use aftermarket, like if you use a resin cockpit tub or any other stuff, um, more, that's going to add weight. Again. That's going to add more weight to the nose, anyways. To be quite honest with you, the work involved putting in the resin cockpits and these and these kits, dude. Um, 
the kit cockpit is actually whoops, and i've only had one glass Broke. so uh, <laughs> the kit cockpit itself is actually just fine there's really nothing wrong with this the items that need correcting are the bulkheads so you know the center the center bulkhead uh, behind the pilots and the aft bulkhead behind the NFOs um, or the ECMOs. Sorry. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> yeah. The, um, of course, the instrument panel, depending on the block that you're doing, uh, would need to be changed. But to be quite honest with you, I'm actually thinking about doing resin updates for just the bulkheads. That you would just glue it in the cockpit. Um, sell it cheap, you know, maybe eight, ten bucks. And the the reason why I want to do that is because you won't have to remove anything from the kit. You won't have to cut any casting block. You use this tub, you plop in the new parts, they add a lot more detail. And then once the ejection seats are in, I mean, you're not really going to be able to see a whole lot of, of this part here. Um, the ejection the seats, seats the ejection okay. seats are actually really, really good in the kit, right out of the box. They're really great. And the nice thing about them is the frames, so you put the frames together, and then the cushions are separate. Once that's done, you get yourself wait a second. Uh, so you can go Edward. All right, figure I got a crap load of seat belts, but Edward has just photo etched seat belts and harnesses. You get this, I think this is like eight, eight bucks, eight or nine bucks, something like that. Yeah, this is all you need. Um, and the nice thing is, these are the pre painted photo etched belts. So you can assemble the frame, paint it black. You can paint the cushions, your olive drab, dark greenish, you know, do your little weathering and, and highlights, and then put these in the black frames and then apply your colored photo etch belts. So it's, it's, uh, you don't even need aftermarket seats for this kit. Uh, the, the seats are really, really nice. Um, the cockpit tub itself is, is really nice. Uh, one thing that the only other issue I've ran into when building this kit is underneath the wing and the wheel well, you've got locating holes for the pins on the landing gear. And I can't remember which side it is, but one one side of the landing gear, again, I, it's either the port or the starboard, I can't remember. There's no pins. So one set of landing gear has the pins that fit into the holes, and then the other side doesn't have the pins that fit into the holes. So you're kind of like, you just, I just use a lot of super glue, um, or you could you know, drill little pilot holes in the, in the landing gear and use either a uh, round sprue or, 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 brass or copper rod or whatever um but just a heads up that one side doesn't have rotating pins on the landing gear uh, thank you man okay found your uh information for uh um general bolden okay uh first uh one i have him as piloting was uh january 12th 1986 sts one um sts 61 c on the columbia okay and then the other one was april 24th 1990 sts 31 on the discovery okay so columbia and discovery yep okay and then what there's another bad? one and he actually piloted atlantis too really uh 92 shows him as pilot of atlantis and 92 on STS 45. That's got to be so 
<laughs> yeah, he, he, he got a lot of time up there. Uh, STS 60 on uh, February 3rd of uh, 94. Yeah, and he was like in the friggin' rotation, man. <laughs> ben went Ben went all private investigator on me and shit or <laughs> in the Zoom meeting. Hey, I I can find out information pretty quick. I'm I'm good at tracking shit down. <laughs> Ben's like his dog's name is and he lives <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> He prefers Charmin toilet paper over this brand. <laughs> Here, I'll send you the link. Uh, That's getting a little personal. The, uh, <laughs> I'll send it over to, to your uh, Leatherneck to Cal's, uh, or do you want it to your personal? Uh, either one is fine. Okay. You're awesome, man. Thank you, man. Hey, uh, no problem. So let's see. Other, other aspects of the kit that at first look may seem a little odd uh, are the wheels. So obviously, Jay, you know, you've got the kit there. And, and for those of you others that, that have the kit on hand, um, Kinetic actually does this with a lot of their kits where the wheels are, are halves and then, or the tires are halves. And then you've got, the wheels as kind of like a one piece and it, it, it does the, the sandwich in between. And when I first saw those, I thought that was the dumbest design I had ever seen on a kit wheel. It just, to me, it just, it was stupid. So of course I, I went out and I bought, I bought the resin wheels. Um, when I did the five prowlers, yeah, uh, but it makes two, painting really easy. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. So when I did the five prowlers for VMAQ two, I was on a short, a, a short time frame, and and there were five of them. Okay, so obviously, I, I don't want to dump a lot of money into these things. I don't want to, you know, buy aftermarket tires for all the kits. Uh, I didn't want to buy aftermarket for anything um so i built them right out of the box so of course i had to use the kit wheels they're they're actually pretty darn good um the way they're designed is the tolerance is just tight enough to where you don't get a lot of, of course you, you know you're going to glue them anyways but you would think that there would be a lot of play in between the tires and, and the actual wheel. And you would have like a, a, you know, an unsightly gap, you know, between the two. And that's absolutely not the case. Uh, to be quite honest with you, other than decals and maybe photo etched seat belts, um, a couple other little knickknacks, you really don't need a lot of aftermarket for this kit. This, this is one of the few model kits out there where where I actually have no intention on using really any aftermarket on. Um, one thing that a lot of modelers miss when modeling the EA6B and regardless of the manufacturer is the Prowler has static dischargers, okay? On the air brakes and on the rudder, okay? Now, <laughs> Cat's like, what's up? Uh, yeah. Here's an easy fix. So Master makes uh, static dischargers for the F-16. Okay, they're, in scale, they're 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 pretty much the exact same static dischargers that are used on the Prowler. Okay, so when you build your Prowler, get you some static dischargers because everybody always misses these things. I, I have. There's only been like one or two Prowler models that I've ever seen built online that had the static, the static dischargers uh, applied. So those that, things suck it. What's that? <laughs> those things suck in real life. I don't want to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's that and. and that. Master also makes the turn uh, refueling probe tip. So other than 
here's what I would suggest. Photo etch seat belts, the refueling probe tip, the static dischargers, and my wing fold hinge cover. This is it. This is literally all you need for this kit. Um, the even though it's one of Kinetics and Raymond's earlier releases, uh, the kit is pretty much dead on. Uh, earlier, Jay was talking about he has like four, I think he said four monogram prowlers. Okay, I had yeah. I had two, and I know I have the pictures on my on my main computer in the office. Uh, I had two monogram kits that I literally took a tape measure to a to a prowler in the hangar at Cherry Point, and I measured from the the front of the canopy. Basically, all the different points, all the panel lines, all along the fuselage of the aircraft, the wing. I measured everything I could, and I wrote all those measurements on the monogram kit. You know, I said, okay, from from this panel line to this panel line is is forty inches, and from this panel line to that panel line is fifty two inches. So I did that on this on both of these kits. Went back to my barracks room, and I had basic drawings of the prowler. And then transferred all those measurements onto the drawings. Like any model, there is no kit that is ever going to match the dimensions of the real aircraft perfectly. It is it is physically impossible to do. It, it can't be done, period. Um, but I... I use those measurements to try to get an idea of how off things are. Okay. And the reason why I do that is because when I design decals, okay, I design all of my decals to scale. So if the marking is 12 inches on the real jet, I draw my marking 12 inches in the decal art. Okay. But let's say I know a distance on the, on the real kit from point A to point B is, is 48 inches. But on the model kit, it scales out to 45 inches. Well, then once I draw my artwork to the actual size, then I adjust accordingly. So it, it looks accurate, even though it's not completely accurate. It's proportionately correct to, to the dimensions of the aircraft. Okay. All that said, the kinetic kit is pretty damn close. I mean, I, I'm literally within like four or five inches uh the dimensions of the real jet that the, the kinetic prowler is almost dead on. And, you know, everything is like, everything is proportionately correct as to where it should be. So uh, kinetic did a good job. They, 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 they really did a good job on this kit. Uh, it's, it's relatively accurate as far as the details are concerned. Uh, of course, like any platform, you know, you have to base your your interior details, your cockpit on something, okay? And it, it's unrealistic to expect them to get the cockpit configurations correct for for every aircraft that was out there. Um, and, you know, Jay, you know, all you guys that have been around aircraft know that uh, – a block. I'm making. I'm making numbers up. A, a block five F-18 is supposed to have this cockpit configuration, but that doesn't mean that every block five F-18 is going to have that that exact cockpit configuration. There's always going to be changes. There could be a different a different panel in this jet versus this one. So, and even with the Prowler. You know, there's the block 89. There's the the I that I cap one, I cap two, I cap three. Dude, there were so many changes in the cockpit configurations of the prowler. It's it's it, it's crazy. Um, so other than getting your and even then, the biggest changes were in the instrument panels. 
So, yeah, there were changes on the side consoles, but I think in model form and in 48 scale, they're not enough to worry about. So, other than the different configurations for the instrument panels, the antenna suite, the antenna configurations, um, the locations of all the scoops, the size of the football, uh, the size of the, the ALQ-99s, the fuel tanks, the pylons. Uh, the, the kit stacks up pretty damn good. It, Jay, you, you worked around the things. I'm sure you'll probably agree looking at the kit. You know, you look at it and you're like, holy shit, like they, they got it right. You know, they they, they did their homework. Uh, by relative comparison, um, the other kits that I've seen as far as especially the monogram kit, like, I mean, you'll find whole panel sections that are just not there. Um, and this this kit does, does a pretty good job as far as like um, get it, getting a lot of it there like i mean it's tough to get everything i mean you know as on the prowler the, the big thing was all your uh a lot of your underside panels your access panels and stuff like that were actually structural so it's not like you're looking at you might have a panel that's only like a foot and a half two foot wide especially along the slat like uh, along the slats and everything else that you'll have 150 screws in that panel you know, and, and like the one, the, the few, the few pictures that I'm, I, I, I have that I'm going back and trying to figure out how the hell I really want to do it is to get the critical length screw colors and everything that we used to put underneath on those panels and just kind of just like, all right, how do I just a, a pinpoint of, of color there? But a lot of those the, the the kinetic has i mean you can't expect them to have them all but the monogram is the monogram doesn't even have a lot on the especially on the underside as far as details yeah. so the one question you, i was going to go ahead, pose uh was the question with the icap one two and three did you guys have in your squadrons like uh various jets of different uh uh, different ICAPs, or did, was it all squadron at at once for that? Uh, we would, we would it basically, we would get a bird. It depended on where we were and what we were doing, but for the most part, like if we were coming back from like Iraq or Afghanistan, I remember when we started getting the ICAP threes in. We got three birds, and three birds went to Jacks. So we sent out three immediately, and so for like a month, we were the happiest maintainers because we had two aircraft. You know, and so get we get the three in. We did we do our acceptance on them. You know, right around the same time, and then we we'd get the others. But for the most part, it kind of went priority based. So like if if you were the next squadron out, you were gonna get priority birds. You know, and then or if they had a bunch of them done at Nadev Jacks waiting for you to get back, then you would get them. But okay, for the part, it was kind of like grouping. But okay. It, it yeah, it was always like when I was in, it was it was ICAP two transition to three almost immediately, okay. and uh, yeah, it was we got like three, and then we traded a bird away, and then we got one in, and it was kind of how it was. Well, I was just doing it for the sake of the other people wanting to build this. It's like a kit, whether or not it's like if you'd see like um, similar birds in the same squadron that you'd have different uh, variations of of ICAP 2 and ICAP 3, like depending on the time frame that you're getting it. Yeah, not not really too much. I mean, like I said, like like I'll, you would go, you would leave, and as you're leaving, you'd get the latest and greatest, and then when you come back, you get what was left over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, no. I, that's that's like any squadron uh, when when you're going through a transition. When when I was in VQ, um, we started getting the EC-130Qs in Guam. Well, those were the ones with wingtip pods, like you see in my background picture there. Um, but when I first got to the squadron, the two airplanes that they had didn't have those. And everything that came after had them. So there's 
a period where you got both, <laughs> you know. Okay. So it it's the military doesn't do a wholesale change to a squadron. It's an evolutionary process. You you send an aircraft. Even when I was in the training command, we got some TA four Fs, which are basically combat capable TA fours. Um, and we could always identify them because they had Shrike weapons panels uh, underneath the armament panel. Um, but when they went through uh, depot maintenance in Pensacola, they came back as straight TA-4Js without the Shrike panels and all the extra stuff on them. So, you know, it's it, it's always an evolutionary thing. Did we lose Jay or did I mess up? I don't see Jay. Jay, where'd you go? I don't think I... Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just realized that he just kind of I know Rich just yeah. Rich just kind of <clears throat> disappeared. Um, yeah. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Hopefully he'll uh, hopefully he'll come back on. I hope it's nothing I did. No, was, probably not. He just well because I was maybe he did. Maybe he doesn't realize yet he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was changing the view because I had it on basically speaker and the way that worked is as yeah. as someone would talk, they would populate the screen. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I know right. there's a way where everyone could be on the screen at the same time. And so I changed it. And then there was like an arrow, you know, one going to the right, one going to the left or however this is, this is doing. And I clicked on it and it kind of <laughs> scrolled everybody. And then when I clicked on it, I noticed Jay wasn't here anymore. And I'm like, oh crap. I like I I, I hope I hope Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think you can kick anybody off, but no, you I know, think that, I, I keep it on speaker view and and uh you know when he was showing his decal sheets, if he wasn't talking and somebody else did, then the decal sheet disappeared. So you couldn't see what he's okay <laughs> go, going on. So uh, well, ho hopefully it was nothing. Hopefully it was nothing serious. Maybe it's just you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, people, got, people got things going on that that they need to attend to. Um, all right. Well, so, yeah. Let's see. So, for the benefit of anyone else that may watch this video once I post it. For those of you that have not owned the kit or built the kit or worked on the kit, is there any questions that you might have about the kit that we may be able to answer? Yes, sir. The uh, can does it? Do they tint it? Is it clear plastic? Clear. Uh... So it's clear, right. um, and it is. Uh, so in order to get the, the bubble effect correct, yeah. uh, they molded the two sides, uh, separately. Um, there's Jay, Jay's back. Uh, that we lost you. That method? Um, yeah, it's, now, if you're careful, they actually go together relatively easy. They, they line up just fine. Um, it's a matter of getting the two ends right here where they mate, uh, getting those lined up just right. Uh, okay. That could be a little bit tricky. So the, there's not a lip or any connector. It's just a bunch of... Uh, it's just, it's a butt joint is what it is. So right. the, the easiest way to get them glued properly 
is once you have the fuselage halves glued together, uh, once you get everything assembled and you know you're you, you've got you've got all your seams filled and everything, the easiest way to get the canopies aligned properly is put put you know one half here, and I just use a you know a couple small pieces of Tamiya tape and kind of tape it to the fuselage. And then take the other side, you do yeah. your little sanding cleaning, and once they're lined up there, and and you get that. You get that cross joint like as smooth as you can get it. Apply you a bead of Tamiya cement, let it zip down, and then just hold it for a few seconds. And nine times out of ten, that'll get you nice aligned uh, canopies. Um, now, how do they the, depict the uh, how, how about the canopy hinge areas? Do they depict? Because I know that doesn't the Prowler have the uh, it has like a spring loaded door there behind it. Yes, it does. Do they depict that accurately, or no? It's it's basically just you know your your, yeah, your the standard tabs. Uh, okay. pins, um, and honestly, they yeah, don't man. they don't line up to the slots the way they're supposed to. So they're they're a little bit finicky. You kind of mm -hmm. got to do a little bit of you know little sanding, little shaving to kind of get them to line up just right. Uh, yeah, man. Now in the closed position, they actually fit. They actually fit pretty good. Um, all the prowlers that I've built so far have all been canopy down, uh, and you have to do a little bit of shaving in the in the tabs to get them to fit just right in the slots on the fuselage, but it's very minimal. Um, and once that's done. That the canopies themselves fit in the in the fuselage sides like the way they're supposed to. Uh, they're 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 not that bad. Um, right, Question, should, Dave. So, yes, sir. Uh, how how since those canopies are clear, how do you get the gold tint on them? What do you use? You know, honestly, I did not tint any of the canopies on any of the models that I built. Um, but like like any other uh, tent, there's modelers out there that have, there, I mean, there's a number of different ways that you can do it. Uh, you can use uh, Tamiya Clears. Uh, I've seen guys that have uh, put food coloring in future. Uh, like there's, <laughs> okay. there's so many different techniques to, to achieve the tinning on clear canopies. Uh, personally, yeah. the only thing I've ever done is is the green, the green on top of the Huey, and that's just to uh -huh. me, that's just to me a clear green. So okay, I, I've never actually tinted. Yeah, yeah, because the S three has kind of a brownish tint to it, you know. Well, the the prowlers do too. There's a depending on the lighting, it depending on the lighting, it could look like either a a, a brownish color or or a goldish tint to it. It, it 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 it's all just one of those things where the light's got to hit it just right to to depend on the color. Now, it's hol holodeck. I. <laughs> side of them they it just kind of is like a yellowish when you're looking out through it yeah um now like like the yeah, it Viking. depends on the holodeck settings right <laughs> <laughs> now just like the s3 viking one thing that i've seen a lot of modelers do that's incorrect is they've actually tinted the front two panes and the front two panes yeah. of the prowler are clear just like they are on the bike. Yep. Okay. The side windows, I believe, have a tint to them. And I got to go back and look at my pictures, but I do know that the front two panes are clear. Now, the canopies themselves yeah. have the coating on them. Um, Jay, that, that is correct, right? If, if my correct. observations yep. are correct. Okay. Um, yep. Now, again, 
I'm not a prowler guy. I'm going off of my personal observations and all the pictures <laughs> I've taken and what I've seen. Um, so, uh, but to to recap on the canopies, they come clear. They come in halves. Uh, the best way to line them up is to attach them to your completed fuselage, get them lined up, apply your cement. Uh, the tent is however, whatever method you want to use to get the tent. Uh, do not tent the two front panes because they're clear. Um, and that's it on that. Um, trying to think of anything else that stood out when... I built the kits that I built. Oh, the speed brakes are the speed brakes are the absolute worst aspect of of this kit. Uh, they are absolutely horrible. Um, if there is one part of the kit that does not fit like at all, it it is the wingtip speed brakes. Um, the way, not only are they a pain in the ass to to get off the sprues, um, kind of the way they're the way they're sprued up. Oh um, yeah, that looks ugly. <laughs> yeah, it, they're, they're a real pain in the ass to get off the sprues. Um, and here's the the hinge mechanisms here, and then the actual speed brakes here, and the holes go all the way through. So that's that's another pain in the ass. Um, they do not none of so all these parts right here are the different uh, hinges for the for the air brakes, and depending on whether or not you want to depict them closed or open, and none of them fit the way they should. Uh, they they don't line up properly. Uh, the the speed brakes themselves don't line up uh, to the area of the of the wing here on the at the aft end. Uh, that takes some work to get the fit properly. Uh, everything else, uh, the trailing edge flaps. Uh, the slats, everything fits fine, except for the the wingtip speed brakes. Uh, so pain is the, the closed uh, the closed option? Is that one piece, or is it still two halves coming together? So it's one piece. The problem is when you so the one piece is like is is right here, and gotcha. And I can't remember if it's the bottom half or the top half, but on one side, the actual hinge mechanisms are attached to, to the speed brakes, okay? The problem is the, the wing right here, this part is thicker than the inboard edge of the actual uh, brake itself. Yeah. Okay, so you have that going against you right off the bat. Then they give sounds you. Like a job. So, so it sounds like they had the junior engineer modeling the speed brakes. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> then you have then you have the the air brake mechanisms for the closed position that because the thickness of the air brake itself is thinner than the thickness of the end of the wing. So you have that funky where it's going to line up on one side, but it's not going to line up on the other. Okay. Yeah. The, other, yeah. the other issue is, so these parts have all the detail on them for the actual like mechanism itself. Okay. But but the part that's attached to the speed brake itself, there's no detail at all. It's just a sliver of, of plastic. So you got <laughs> so it's so now you got detail on one side and not the other. 
you've got one part that's thinner than where it's supposed to meet up to. Nothing lines up properly. Um, you have to fill the holes. If you do it open, you have to fill the holes here. Uh, so the air brakes are a pain in the ass. Uh, so, sounds like an aftermarket, <laughs> sounds like an aftermarket I, opportunity. Yeah, it, they're on the list. They're, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're on we'll the list. We'll we'll count on you, man. From what I remember. <laughs> About Mean, the way meanwhile, the there's evergreen styrene and modeling skills. <laughs> yeah, those are okay, those weird. really weird. <laughs> the um, so you have the two two uh, stripes on top that are going to be your upper mount or lower mounts for each one. Then the speed brakes themselves would come together in almost like a scissoring or like a like a piano hinge kind of fashion and there was a singular actuator that came out from the middle and that's actually what drove them in and out um they're kind they were just there was like a like a dog bone in the middle of each one of them so like the design itself was an anomaly unto itself so i i mean i i can't blame them too much they <laughs> they're a pain work on to start with and the the biggest thing about those that that i've seen on some models that phenomenally like just absolutely beautiful models that are perfect in so many ways and then they got the wings folded and the speed brakes open <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of stuff drives me nuts the other one i've seen that drives me nuts is I saw somebody have them partially open and they don't partially open. They're closed or they're open. Yeah. So they, they, it's, it's, all, it's a ball lock. They, 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 there was no halfway. So they have yeah. a cuticle. There's no hydraulic drive to them. No, so, it's, a, it, it is, but it's a, it, the actuator comes out and locks. Yeah. So there's so, no yeah. way they're going to bleed open there. Yeah. 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 Like, so a, a prime example of this would be, uh, when I was in Afghanistan, we had some speed brake damage. They The previous shift had fixed it. They daily turned it around, sent it out to the line. We were go, Our CO was flying in the bird, and we went out there. Beautiful Afghanistan sunrise up over the mountains, and I just happened to look at the speed brake and saw the dog bone was missing. So basically what we had to do was I hooked it up, the dog bone, to the airframe side and had the pilot bump the bump the trigger because like i said you you have to open it just a little at a time and if you don't have a hydraulic jenny you're not going to be able to so i was like all right sir just kind of bump it and i just started wailing on it with a hammer got it to pop in and the bird flew but it was one of those things that that's just one of those things it, it, it'll pop open and it'll close and it'll pop open and it'll close unless you hold it down it goes all the way open hits the ball lock and holds okay. Yeah, it's like speed brakes on the uh, A4. You know, mm -hmm. they're either full up or full down. Yep. There ain't no in between. <laughs> so, all right, let's, let's see if I can think of anything else on the kit that stands out. Um, all right, so we discussed the canopies. Uh not that big of a deal, uh, unless you're Jay with his uh, with his crushed box and jacked up tail section. Uh, so everybody's got to be special. Uh, <laughs> so hey, we Marines ride the short bus for a reason. So yeah, you know, <laughs> it happens. It happens. So the the fuselage uh, goes together. Uh, relatively well. Um, the only area that's that's a bit of a challenge is this part right here. Uh, you've got so like I said, I've got about 30 of these kits on hand. And some of them this area right here and this area right here are relatively clean. And some of them the steps because it's got that 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 multi-part mold to, to get that you know to get that curve right um some of them there there's some steps and it's a little pain in the ass to kind of kind of clean up uh, 
But for the most part, like I said, this is just held together. And you can see there's not a not a whole lot of gaps. Uh, everything goes together relatively well. Uh, so the fuselage is good. Uh, wings, like we discussed earlier, uh, they fix the wing issue. So everything on the wings fits kind of, uh, of course, it's all falling apart on me as I'm telling you how, how good it fits. <laughs> um, but hey, trust me, the wings fit fine. Um, the nose cone fits really, really well. Uh, the ALQ-99s are pretty darn accurate. Um, there are aftermarket options out there. And to be quite honest with you, they're not necessary. Um, the, the benefit to the aftermarket options is you don't have to assemble them. Um, you just you take them out of the package, you remove the casting block, and then they're ready to go. Where the kit ones, you obviously have to put together and then fill the seams and sand smooth. If you're looking at the accuracy aspect, uh, there's nothing wrong with the ones that come in the kit. They're 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 pretty much dead on. So personally, I would forego the added expense of getting aftermarket pods and just use the ones in the kit. Um, why do you must be getting old? You're, it looks like you're looking at the clock and and yawning and shit. You know, hey, you know. <laughs> I'm up at zero five every morning, bro. Come on, yeah, so, <laughs> someone's got. Hey, hey, get up at zero five and PT, brother. Hey, I, yeah. I, I I'm up earlier. Up, I've been up since zero three, so I don't want I don't I don't want to hear no whining from you from you Navy kids. Yeah, zero four right here. <laughs> it, dude, doesn't that suck? Like, like we're retired. Most some of us are retired, okay? And I still get yeah. up at like three thirty four in the morning. You know, I don't yeah. set the alarm. I just wake yeah. up again. So well, yeah. dude, I do I, too sometimes, but it's not for any reason other than to go to pee. <laughs> 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 I've, got, I've got a couple of friends that have posted that complained that they had to get up at eight in the morning and i'm like dude by eight in the morning i've had like i'm already on my second pot of coffee <laughs> i'm i'm answering a bunch of emails i've shipped out i've shipped out orders i might have run, i might have ran an errand or two already by eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> like, <laughs> the day is half over by zero seven thirty yeah, <laughs> trying to think. Eight o'clock. I'm coming up on first break. <laughs> yeah, reveille, reveille, reveille. All hands turn to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the world uh, hasn't much. We we're still we're still cranking out early. Like uh, they, even with like we they bumped us to zero six start time. Mm -hmm. I'm building uh I'm building the new TH seventy three A's the uh, Navy Marine Corps trainer that replaces the Jet Ranger. Oh, nice! Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm, I'm building those now up, up in Philly here. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a Philly man, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> yeah. live in. I live about an hour from Philly, but still. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I spent 15 years in Pittsburgh, so. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. <laughs> uh, I got a question real quick. I don't know if, uh, if Jorge, if you can, if you can hear me. Um, all right, so I do have the corrected wing fold hinge cover, um, and that is not it is not part of the speed brake. Um, so what the wing hold the wing fold hinge cover replaces is on the wing. So there's this this hole right here, uh, and let me see if I can find the the kit. Wing fold hinge cover. Okay, so this is this right here is is the part that comes in the kit that fits in that hole that I just showed you on the wing. Okay, here's the difference between my part and the part that comes in the kit. All right, so the part that comes in the kit has the correct shape, and you can't really see it on the camera. Maybe you can. There are two round. <laughs> ejection pin marks right 
on the very top that is visible once once it's applied once it's attached to the kit okay and then the center portion is smooth okay on the real aircraft that part actually kind of it's got like a piano hinge and it kind of does one of these numbers when when the wing when the wing folds okay so all my resin part does is it's the exact same shape as the part that comes in the kit, but it obviously doesn't have the ejector pin marks. And then at the at the crest, it actually has the piano uh, hinge kind of like engraved in it. Um, and it literally just replaces the kit part. Like you don't have to do anything. You just you just glue my part in place of the kit part and then you're done. Now, is it needed? Absolutely not. If you're the type of modeler that, you know, you want to fill those ejector pin marks and then you want to take a scribing tool and just kind of scribe a line at the at the at the crest of that of the kit part, by all means, uh, feel free to do so. Um I'm I'm the oddball in the aftermarket community. Nothing I produce is absolutely needed by the modeler. It's not. And I know people are like, dude, what the hell? Why would you, why would you say that about your product line? Okay. Dude, aftermarket is not needed. You do not need aftermarket. Okay. They are nice to haves. Okay. What we try to do is we try to save you time and and try to provide you with parts that are more accurate than ones that what comes in the kit. Um, our modeling time is precious. Uh, a lot of you out there that are going to watch this video, um, you don't have the luxury of being retired. You, you have jobs. You have families. You have you have day to day responsibilities that limit your time at the modeling bench. And what what we try to do is provide you an option that speeds up your model building when you do have time to sit at the bench, okay? Uh, another way I'm the oddball is I try to keep my prices as absolutely dirt cheap as possible, okay? Um, while this helps pay the bills, um, I've been blessed where I was able to retire from the Marine Corps. Um, I, I got a, I got a nice benefit from the VA. Um, although, admittedly, if if I could have uh, a day without pain and and less money from the VA, I think I would choose that. Um, but I don't, so I get a nice fat check every month for dealing with all the other issues that I have. So, making money is not my motivation. Um, my motivation is being able to provide aftermarket sets that save you money and and help speed up your model building process. So uh, that said, the wing fold hinge cover that I sell, six bucks. And um, I, dude, I'm going to be honest with you, the clamshell, I've probably got more money in the clamshell than I do in the two little resin pieces that come in the package. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, but. So we're buying a box. You're buying a <laughs> clamshell and, <laughs> and, the, and the piece of paper that, that tells you what you're buying. Um <laughs> No, so that's, I mean, honestly, I try to keep my prices as, as, as cheap as I can possibly make them. Uh, and honestly, I would actually, believe it or not, I, my prices would actually be cheaper if I didn't sell to retailers. Okay. Obviously, I have to give all my retailers a discount. Okay. And so if I went lower than once I applied their discount, Okay, now I'm pushing that. Uh, I'm either like just breaking even or I'm possibly taking a loss. So 
I price my stuff based on once I take my retailer's discount in, into account, then it's like, okay, I, I got to make something because obviously I, the business has to continue. So, but I try to price my stuff to where I can just stay in business. I mean, that that's, that's, that's pretty much the bottom line. Um, but anyways, Jorge, I hope that answers your question. I know that was a very long winded answer to a very, very simple, <laughs> simple question. And I apologize. Um, thank, so, thank you for that explanation, Dave. I don't know if you can hear me, um, but it's that it's awesome that someone like you is available that does this type of thing for us modelers, you know, in the community out there. And I'm, I, I look up to you guys, you know, to, 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 you know, to look for more stuff. Cause yeah, it's, it's, it's time saver, like you said. And, and I just want to say, you know, you're awesome. Thank you for that. No, no, I, I very much appreciate it. And, you know, I, I get, I get a lot of similar uh, comments and, and, and compliments. Um, and yes, the PMBR is still on the table. <laughs> So, uh, Jorge, to answer your question directly and, and to respond to that directly, I, I very much do appreciate it. And um, I do get a lot of similar uh, comments. And it, it means more to me than you could possibly imagine. And going back to what I said about the whole money aspect, I, I literally am not in this for the money. I'm, I'm really not. I'm, I'm in this for the pure enjoyment of of being able to provide what I'm able to provide uh, to the modelers out there. Um, when we were, when we were on our way to the nationals, uh, my best friend from uh, sixth and seventh grade, believe it or not, uh, from California uh, lives in St. Louis and we stopped at his house and, you know, we were able to visit and spend the night there on our way to Omaha. And he knows what I do, but he he's not a modeler. He doesn't he he's, he doesn't know really anything about the hobby. So he was asking me about the line, and he's he he follows me on on Facebook. We're friends on Facebook, and he sees my posts. And he brought up the fact that I had at, earlier this year that I had dropped the prices on all my products. And he's like, "Isn't your product line carried by like a bunch of different stuff?" bunch of different retailers. I said, yeah. I said, I've got, you know, there's one in Hong Kong and China, uh, a couple in Japan, the United Kingdom, Cyprus. I got, you know, two or three here in the States. He's like, so your product sells? And I was like, yeah. He goes, and it sells well. And I'm like, relatively, yes. He's like, but you dropped your prices. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, why? I'm like, well, because I was able to reduce I was able to reduce my costs. Like, you know, I, I found uh, the clamshells that I got are less expensive than the ones I was getting. I said, I print my own header cards. I said, I was able to, I figured out the whole 3D printing thing. and I was able to get more parts in a shorter amount of time. And da, 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 da. I said, so the cost of me being in, in business went down. I said, so I lowered all my prices to, you know, because my cost went down. He's like, but that's not how you run a business. I'm like, yeah, but that's how I run my business. <laughs> he was like, yeah, but he goes, if your product is wanted and you have all these retailers and you're selling product, he goes, you should raise your prices to maximize your profit. And I'm like, no. I was like, because here's the deal. Dude, I'm a model builder too. Look, look, look. See, I, 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 I've done models too. No, you don't. You put them on a shelf. I, I do. I, 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 look, look, how, look how awesome they are. So, hey, okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me backtrack. I'm a model collector too. There you go. <laughs> this shit's expensive. Yeah, see, Ben, this shit's expensive. Kits are expensive. Paints are expensive. Glues are expensive. Tools are expensive. I like our hobby is freaking expensive. We're all dealing with the same shit. Gas is up. Food is up. Your your basic 
your basic supplies, like air, all the prices are going up. Okay. Well, the hobby is an escape from all that other crazy, stupid bullshit out there that we're dealing with. Okay. The high gas prices and all the other stress that comes with it. Again, guys have families. They, they have, you know, they have jobs that they have to get to. When they sit at the workbench, that is their time to relax and get away from all the other crap. Okay. I get up in the morning anywhere from zero three to zero five. And I, and I, and I, my commute is from the upstairs bedroom to the downstairs office. Like that's it. It's like two flights of stairs and that's my commute. Okay. My truck doesn't leave my driveway unless I have to drop off packages at the post office. Okay. Or go a couple miles up the road to get groceries. Okay. So why, why would I charge more for a product that doesn't cost me a lot of money to produce to, to make more money. And I know people are probably like, well, that's the whole reason for you're being in business. No, the, the reason I'm in business is because I absolutely love what I do. And there is no, no greater satisfaction. I've made, I've said this dozens of times before in the past. I don't build a lot of models um, simply because my time is either creating product or packaging orders or packaging product or, or, or you name it. But to go to a model show and see something that you've created on someone else's model, dude, that is like, that is like the greatest feeling ever. Um, there, there is no better feeling. I'll tell you what, the nationals, okay. Perfect example, nationals in Omaha. Every model show that I ever go to, I don't, I don't look at the models to look at like, oh, that's an awesome model. I walk through the model section to find something that I've done on someone else's model. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Because, so at the Nationals, there was a 35th scale Academy AH1 Zulu. It used my decals, right? It used the holographic film for my, uh, uh, for the turret. It had my, my FMV mods on the tail. That, I'm like, okay, I created that. And that helped this modeler build this model. Look at that. Let see, look, look, Jorge's got his actually Zulu right there. Jorge, what did you do? What on that Zulu is I, something that I created? I I used your turret, your the the very front of it. I yeah. wanted to get your decals, but you're sold out yeah, on your 135th scale. <laughs> and and I saw that you're coming out with some new ones, and I ended up getting another Zulu just so that I can anticipate getting your decals. Because oh, I love the ones out. that you're coming out with, so so yeah, that's that. I just built this one. Just uh, I finished it about maybe two months ago, and I ended up putting it in the San Diego IPMS show. Okay. I got third place. Nice. So nice. it's not not too shabby, but but yeah, it's thanks to you that uh, I did use that turret up in the front. It's it's beautiful. No, oh, but see that to me that is like the most awesome feeling. Yeah, it's just like being that small part of helping another modeler create what you guys create. Like I don't get to build a lot, but I'm still part of the process. If that makes any sense. And, 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 and to me, that that's, that's the greatest satisfaction. Um, again, I, I, I'm not, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't do this shit for the money. Um, it's not, that's not my driving. Uh, my, what drives me is on, the, especially on the decal side, is, is preserving uh, Marine Corps aviation history. 
that that's what that's what kind of drives me the resin stuff the resin stuff came about because it's things that i've always wanted and i was a i'm an ordinance guy so <laughs> obviously you know that like the vast majority of my resin line is all ordinance so it's all stuff that i've that i've built you know myself so i tried to create the ordinance uh, line uh and it's broken down the same way the real bombs are broken down so the decals are to preserve the history of Marine Corps aviation by way of the barkings that were on those aircraft at that particular point in time. Uh, and the vinyl stuff is just, it, it's a cheap, easy way to replicate, you know, the, the lenses and whatnot and the, and stuff on the aircraft. Um, it was like, uh, Gordon Kwan uh, from Screw Brothers and I were actually talking on the phone the other day. So there was there's one product that I've released that to this day still blows my mind of how well it's done. So back in 2005, I released a vinyl, self-adhesive vinyl cut canopy deck cord for the Harrier. I have sold thousands of those stupid things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I bought like five. <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> Gordon told me that that is the number one selling item of my entire product line. He said I have sold more of those than almost all of your other stuff combined. Yeah. Hannah just bought another set in Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah reorders those things on a regular basis. I am constantly producing those things. And they have been in production since 2005. It is crazy that that little, that little, little vinyl sticker has sold as well as it has. And the other thing that blows my mind is to my knowledge, no one else has ever done it. So it, it's, it's kind of cool, but. Every time, and that's like every time I see a Harrier model at a contest, the first thing I do is I go up and I look to see if they use my canopy deck cord. It's like, oh, cool, he did. Um, but anyways, that's like that was. You need, that was, you need to do one for a T forty five. I do. He does. I have you one do. For the T, yes, I have one for the T forty five. Right. Yeah, it's been out. Well, I'll have to check that out. Um, and it has. It hasn't done as well as the Harrier one. Um, well, uh, probably because most people are they're well, not doing as many T forty fives. I mean, that thing's universal to every Harrier, right? I mean, C yeah. Harriers, A B A S B S, whatever you know. So I, think I mean, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one I just did. That was the Harrier I had in Omaha, and when I got home, I got looking at it, and it's. It was crooked a little bit. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man. I was you like, think maybe the judges noticed that? Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. But <laughs> I, noticed it, you know? I noticed it before I even went to Omaha, so I wasn't really sweating it. But then it just was one of those things that was nipping at me, and I was like, oh, fuck. I'm, I'm yanking that off and replacing it. Because you get two in the box. So... <laughs> All right, so I want to apologize because... The, going off on that tangent was really not my intent. So um, the the whole point of this was actually to talk about the kinetic carrier. Uh, so Jorge, I hope I answered your question, and and I I appreciate uh, the opportunity to to mention why I do what I do. Um, but briefly, let let let's get back to the kinetic to the kinetic prowler. Let me see if there's anything else I could point out that might help you all. Uh, when you build your kits and anyone else that watches this video uh, later on. All right, so we're going to cover. Yes, sir. I was going to ask like uh, like one last question for it's like uh, resin and whatnot. Uh, the um, exhausts, is it, um, is it worthwhile getting uh, the hypersonic exhausts for the Connecticut, or in your opinion, does it look okay? Uh, to be quite honest with you, um, 
that's going to be up to the individual monitor. Okay, now I have the set. I have. I actually have. You know what? And I, I feel, I feel awful that I completely forgot to mention uh, Jeffrey's uh, set. This is an absolute work of art. Uh, Jeffrey did an absolutely amazing job uh, on this set. The way it's designed, uh, everything is keyed. It it fits together perfectly. Um, I have not assembled it, but I've got a friend here locally that has. And once you remove the individual sections from, from their casting block, the way he's got it keyed up is one part fits into the other part like just perfect. And it's it's absolutely amazing. Um, uh, yeah, Cole had to go for dinner. Um <laughs> If you're building the Kinetic Prowler and you just want to build the kit and slap some decals on it and put it in your display case and call it a day, um, do you need any of the aftermarket? No, you don't. Um, if you want to try to make your Prowler as accurate as possible, I'll go back and I will... I will, I will update my my thing of things you need. Photo etch seatbelt harnesses. Static dischargers. In-flight refueling probe tip. Oh, got that all mixed up. <laughs> oh, that, that's why. So, refueling probe tip. Static dischargers. Wing fold hinge covers and the hypersonic exhausts. Uh, the problem with the kinetic exhausts is they're basically just round holes. So once you glue the upper and lower wing halves together and you've got that, that exhaust port, um, it's it's basically just a, a circle, plain circle. On the real aircraft, the the way that aft exhaust end is, um, it's kind of hard to explain verbally, but it has little little veins around the outer edge. There's like a shroud. There's like these little veins, and there's like an inner shroud type deal. And Jeffrey captures okay. that. Jeffrey captures that like almost perfectly. Uh, you do need to do a little bit of surgery on your kit you know you've, you've got to remove some parts of the of the exhaust on the kit in order to get jeffrey's set to fit um but once it does it, it actually does make a big difference um so okay. i've got i've got two or three kits of mine that i do want to go all out uh but again as far as the aftermarket is, is concerned what i just showed that's pretty much going to be the extent of it I'm not going to do the Aries cockpit. They're, they're obviously they're, they're way too much work. I'm not going to use resin wheels because the wheels in the kit are just fine. Um, and those five sets that I just showed that that's really all you need uh, for this kit. Um, the fuel tanks are pretty accurate. The ALQ99 pods are accurate. The wheels look great. All the antennas are pretty much dead on. Um, the ejection seats look really good. Uh, trying to think of what else. What else could be? What else could be replaced? Um, um, so, just to jump in real quick, I did add. Um, so I, I started mine already and a couple of the things that i added was the external interior or the, the exterior undercarriage kit that edward had and this is kind of like some of the landing gear detail on on the doors and stuff okay. on the landing. it came out real good i, I like that a whole lot it, especially with uh the your forward doors 
Your forward landing gear door's got a lot, a lot of detail in them. I don't know how well you can see that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. So those, those are really, really good. They also come with on the uh, on the drop tanks. They come with the side ports. Okay. That thing. Oh, the access ports. Yeah. Ports side. Like, like, like he said, you didn't. You don't really need them by any stretch of the imagination. This one has been, this is my dream kit. This is the, <laughs> the, the bird that I've been, I've had in my head for since Afghanistan in 2010. And like, I went all out. I do have like the bird cage and um, I forget what other kit I, what other, uh, other one I have. I have another one too, but, oh, I did the, uh, the wing fold. That they that you could get for that. So I'm gonna have wings folded, bird cage down, canopies open. But for this one, but yeah. my other birds aren't gonna be like that. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there for for those of you here on the on the on the meeting, and of course once it gets posted, I'll I'll provide a link, um, and I may just go ahead and add them to the website. But uh, a few years ago. Uh, I was selling uh, uh, CDs of all the pictures uh, that I've taken of the Prowler over the years. Now, of course, uh, Jake Malampy over at Read Air has an excellent book on the Prowler. You know, he's he's got his uh, uh, his Prowler book, which is absolutely fantastic. For those of you limited budget, uh, either can't get the book or whatever. I have I've got probably two or three hundred detailed walk around photos of the prowler. Um, everything, uh, the bird cage, uh, wings off the jet, um, like nose to tail, uh, football to tires, like, and everything in between. Uh, what I may do is I'll either find a spot on the website or I'll find a way to post them. Um, or if anyone wants to send me an email, um, I, I can send them via Dropbox. I'll put them all in a Dropbox folder. Um, that way you can look at them. Uh, it's one of those things where uh, I had intended a while ago uh, to do a couple books on, you know, like detail type books. Uh, that's not something I'm really interested in doing. I want to do the Markings History book. That's that's an entirely different project. But as far as the detailed photos that I've taken of aircraft, uh they don't do any good just sitting either on my computer or on four by six prints, you know, in boxes. I mean, the whole point I took the pictures was, you know, for reference material. And if they'll help other people build their models, by all means, I'll, I, I again, I'm that oddity. I don't get all up in arms when, when people post my, I've put pictures on Facebook before and I've got, one picture in particular, it's a flight line at Desert and uh, Shakisa during Desert Storm, and it's it's just bombs as far as you can see on the flight line. Dude, that picture has been shared so many times on Facebook, like I've completely lost track. Um, I've even <laughs> I've even had people send me that picture. It's like, oh, dude, you're an ordinanceman, you'll appreciate this, and I'm like, yeah, I I took I took that picture. <laughs> So, but, but I, I don't get all up in arms when people share my pictures. You know, I, I know there's some people out there that don't get all bent out of shape because, you know, copyright. And it's like, and I totally get it. You know, they're professional photographers and that's, that's how they make their living. Uh, I'm not, it's not how I make my living. Um, so if the pictures get out there, then so be it. If they'll help you build a better, better model, uh, so be it. Uh, but if any of you guys want any of the pictures I've taken of the Prowler, um, by all means, send me an email and I'll and I'll shoot them your way. I'll put them in a Dropbox folder or whatever. Um, and then, uh, obviously, once this gets posted, uh, and anyone else that watches this through its entirety, again, reach out to me via email. That's flyinglinux at att.net, and I'll send you the pictures to uh, to help you on your project. Um, but uh, trying to think if there's anything else on this kit dave that, did you did you work on the prowler was I that part not. of your your service with uh, the marines no so my 
my entire career in the Marine Corps was spent as an ordnance man on the ILO. Okay. For a very short period of time, I was with an F-18 squadron, uh, the MFA-134 out at out, out of Miramar um, from 95 to 96 time frame. Um, and I only spent about eight months at the squadron level. The, the rest of my time was at what we called the I level. So I worked on the on the missile launchers and the bomb racks and the pylons for the F-18. Um, my, my research and my knowledge on the Prowler and the Harrier and the Huey and the Cobra and all the other aircraft that the Marine Corps uh, operates has just been through my own personal observation, uh, going out to the flight line, uh, talking to the Marines in the squadron, um, not going to lie, while I was on active duty, every technical publication that I had an opportunity to download, I downloaded it. And I've got it on my computer here at home. And I read them and I flip through them. You know, I've got everything from airframe manuals to weapons, uh, weapons loading uh, manuals, uh, NATOPS manuals, uh, you name it. If I was able to download it, I downloaded it. Uh, I read them on a regular basis. Uh, I have photographed all our aircraft. I have taken tape measures and plumb lines to the F-18, to the Prowler, to the Harrier, to the Cobra. Um, it, it, it's all just... Uh, just personal research uh, for the sole purpose of trying to preserve the history of our aircraft um, for whoever may want it in the future. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I believe it or not, I, <laughs> I, I actively uh, kind of very under the radar. I, I don't want to, it's kind of borderline stalking, <laughs> but so I follow a lot of groups and I follow a lot of squadron pages and I keep notes of the Marines in these various groups that seem to have, to seem to be as passionate about this stuff as I am because I'm putting together a short list of who's going to be the beneficiary of all my shit if I ever kick the bucket. <laughs> um, because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm being realistic. Like, this stuff, so I don't know if this is true. I, I honest to God, do not know if this is true, okay? I've been told by two people uh, that are on the history side of the Marine Corps. Okay. One was the a, a curator of the, of the National Museum of the Marine Corps, and the other one works for the museum entities. To their knowledge, I am the only person that has ever documented the squadron markings applied to Marine Corps aircraft, basically since Desert Storm. Okay, Again, okay. now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm the only one. I may just be the only one that they're aware of. For all I know, there could be several other Marines out there that are doing the same thing I am. They're just not broadcasting it. You know what I mean? Um, the To answer your question directly, no. I don't have any personal knowledge of the Prowler. I don't have any personal knowledge of the Harrier. I don't have any personal knowledge of the of the uh, the F thirty five, the Zulu, or the Yankee. Uh, I have personal knowledge of the F eighteen, the AH one W, and the UH one N because those are the only platforms that I supported. Um, all the other Marine Corps aircraft, CH fifty three, CH forty six, uh, all the Skids, uh, the other fixed wing assets, the KC one thirties. That's all just been uh, research that I was able to obtain firsthand either by going up to the aircraft or downloading the publications and for the sole purpose of 
documenting the history of them and and trying to uh, just trying to get things right uh, when it comes to scale modeling. That, that's kind of why we do this. Uh, we, we build models because we're trying to preserve uh, history, um, whether it be, you know, the, the guys that do Air Force subjects or the guys that do Navy subjects or Army subjects, you know, Floyd Warner over at uh, Warner's Wings, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's the Army equivalent to what I do here at Flying Leathernecks. You know, he, what he does, you know, capturing, you know, the, the, uh, oh my God, I, Drew a blank. Um, the H one. No, 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 no. Uh, oh my God, Somalia. Uh, okay. You know, he, you know, he covered all the all the, the helicopters from from Somalia and and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, we're very passionate about the subjects that we cover, and we try to learn as much as we can about them. Um, but as far as like. My my personal knowledge, like hands on, no, absolutely not. Uh, I wish I did. To be quite honest with you, I wish I did. Um, and you know, and, I, and Jay, I don't think you've ever spent time on, at the eye level. Uh, but I'll tell you, from from being on the eye level, uh, there's times where I'm kind of jealous of the squadron level guys. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm going to tell you, we're pretty tight, uh, but. Over the over the course of the last 15, 20 years that I've that I've spent around squadron guys, uh I used to think that the ordnance community was really, really like really, really tight. Mm -hmm. there, I don't think there's anything that beats the squadron guys though. Um <laughs> that that yeah, that that yeah, I that, mean that family gives us a run for our money. <laughs> It really does. And actually, uh, I, I think you and the, the last time you and I talked was uh, uh, we, we had lost uh, uh, a uh, ECM Marine um, up here local to me. And uh, that's when we start. That's when I started the, the it's called the Banshee Bar. It's a uh, for page for VMAQ1 veterans. So we could just kind of keep track of each other. You know, check in, say, hey, how's it going? What have you? You know, hey, we're doing this or you're doing that. And I mean, we've got a lot of people on that page now. I think it's like 500 different members, but um, that that experience really kind of cemented, you know, hey, you know, I mean, at this point, I got out in 2010. I mean, that was I, you know, I've been out twice as long as I was in. <laughs> it, it's well, it's one of those that they like you still pop up you still you know get a phone call here or there you know i guess i got a buddy and this is really what what blows my mind is the one that was gonna get out is now a master sergeant <laughs> <laughs> and the, all of us who were lifers got out after after five but um it it really is it's it's a tight-knit group and for us especially the prowler community during the time frame i was in you figure i did two tours in iraq i did one in afghanistan we did a mini debt to El Centro, a mini debt to Nellis, and a mini debt to Yuma. And and I was only in the squadron a little over four years. Jesus yeah, we we did a lot of we did a lot of going places and, and and doing stuff. So I mean, it's one of those things that when you're when you spent more time away from home and more time with those guys than you did with your own families, you know, you really do build up that. That that uh, that I got your back attitude. <laughs> yeah, I'll fight you now, but I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the one thing I, I've personally been blessed with, um, and, and you know, it's funny. So I was in for a total of twenty two years, and the marine that, that this is people are gonna look at you can look at it a couple different ways. So. When I first came in the Marine Corps, I was with Mal's 11 uh, Ordnance at El Toro, which has, you know, been shut down since since the late 90s. Um, but the Marines I served with at Mal's 11, I deployed to Japan with a lot of them, and then we all deployed to Desert Storm together. Okay. We had a very large Ordnance division at that time. 
I remember almost, I remember the names of almost every single Marine that I served with at Miles 11 Ordnance. Okay. <clears throat> I am still friends with almost all the Marines that I served with at Miles 11 Ordnance from 89 to 92. Okay. There are Marines from my command at Cherry Point and Luzerne. Okay. When I retired in two, from 2008 to 2009, I don't even remember their names. There are Marines. Uh -huh. There are Marines that I served with at NAS Fort Worth. There are Marines that I was on recruiting duty with in Pittsburgh. I don't even remember the names. I don't. I, I, I don't. I, I could not tell you what their names were. I just, I have no recollection whatsoever. But all the Marines that I served with from 89 to 92 at Miles 11, I could tell you their names. I could tell you where most of them were from. And I can tell you that most of us are still friends on Facebook. Like it was that one part of my career that like we were literally family. And it's sad that, that everyone else, like after that was just people that I worked with. And I, it's, I know it's kind of sad, um, but yeah. Oh, so, it's, the, it's the truth. Cause those are the guys that you come up through being a, being a nug with. Those are the guys that you're, 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 yeah. you're, doing dumb shit with <laughs> i can't tell you. so i i picked up corporal and went to f or went to iraq but i was still boot and they i i jokingly call myself a lance corporal first class and they were <laughs> they were pushing me to get my cdi but i wasn't ready for it so they were like all right well you're just gonna do everything that you normally would so i was with this one buddy and they were trying to teach me how to order parts and I ended up ordering, I needed, I, coincidentally, we were talking about the canopy hinge covers, uh, which is right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, what it, <laughs> so that, they cracked all the time, but they're really thick. And I had ordered some really, really thick material by accident. And I thought I ordered a small piece and I ordered a four by eight sheet. And I got a four foot by eight foot sheet of, Hundred and twenty thousand thick material, and we had we got to, to, as punishment we had to chop it up. <laughs> well, one thing leads to another, and next thing you know we we're, we're all making ninja stars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we this one kid he comes in and and we're like we jokingly said Martinez catch and we I I acted like I was going to throw it. Well, the guy who's now a master threw it. And the kid went to catch it, realized it was a ninja star, went like this and hit him in the back of the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and like, see, so he ended up coming in the next day, his hands like a looks like a boxing glove, and like we all got in trouble. And, like, but <laughs> that's the stuff you remember. <laughs> you don't remember, you don't remember that time where you're all sitting there CC and CC and toolboxes, but you know, <laughs> it's all, yeah. all the fun stuff. So. Oh yeah, that's all the stuff you, and that's why <laughs> I, I grew up building model planes and everything with my dad. And that's where, well, for the most part, it started with like race cars and stuff. And then, you know, like I, I used it to pass the time when we were in Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff like that. I was able to get, you know, like little acrylic paints shipped out to me and the, the, the worst models I've ever built <laughs> by far. Most of them didn't survive the ship back, but you know, like it, it really is. It's a, like you said, it's a reprieve. And, and I like how you romanticized it so well, because you're talking with such passion about the, the hobby and everything else. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, I wish I had that passion, but I guarantee you I have the passion when I get pissed off and throw one across the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, you, you, you make a mistake, uh, Jay, when you say those were the worst models you ever made because you forget the ones that you made when you were 10 or 15 years old. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, now, now I'm getting, like, my son, he's 14. He's he's, he's taken to building um, – he likes the 172nd scale stuff, and he also likes some of these other things. So, like, he like built – no, he, uh, he oh, LCVP, yeah, yeah, 
build a little one of these guys that he got. I mean, it's a cheapy little little model, but he's he's you know he's learning, and yeah. it's 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 something else we get to do together. We're uh, I jokingly said it before. We're we're big racing family, so like we yeah. they they race. They have their own cars and stuff like that, and we race all over the country. So yeah. this is this is my winter hobby. That's why. <laughs> Well, you're talking about how long you were in and how long you've been gone. I did my I swears in 71, went through AOCS, mm -hmm. Officer and a Gentleman movie, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, retired in 97. So next year I will have been gone for as long as I was in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we're all, I honestly think that I would venture to guess that probably about 75% of all modelers are just as passionate about the hobby as I am. Uh, they, they may not express it in the way I did, um, but I think we're all just as passionate because it's something that we continue to do. And if you weren't passionate, you simply wouldn't be doing it anymore. It just, it, you know, it would be, it would be one of those things where, yeah. you know, you'd build a model exactly. and, you'd, and then you'd go on to, to other things. Uh, but we don't, that we, you know, we, uh, a lot of us might've taken a break. You know, we probably did this when we were kids. I know, I know I did. Um, I still vividly remember to this day, uh, my, <laughs> my uncle bought me a model car and I remember getting it to the house and opening the box. And in my excitement, I cut all the parts off the trees. And my cousin, <laughs> my cousin Steve was going to help me put it together. And he was irritated and frustrated because I removed all the parts from the trees and he didn't know what was what. And I'm going to like, we'll just look at the pictures. Like, like, there's all the parts and you know you just match up you just match up the parts to the to the drawing and you should be able to you know we should be able to figure it out but but you know like i said i started when i was a kid like most of us uh discovered sex and then models weren't important <laughs> anymore uh you know <laughs> and then you know and then, that happened and then, you know, join the Marine Corps and, you know, my, I don't think my drill instructors would have been too keen if I would have sat at my rack and, you know, put a model airplane together, you know, <laughs> while we're trying, trying to drill. So, you know, you, you take the obvious breaks away from, away from building yeah. models. Uh, but, you know, eventually came back to it and um, just, it, it just, it's one of those things that it's, it's, it's part of who I am as much as, as much as being a Marine. Uh, everything I do in this hobby is just, uh, it's something that I enjoy. It's something I, I absolutely love doing. Uh, it's, it's the, it's the history part of it, you know, preserving, preserving our history. Um, uh, the other benefit is having a girlfriend that is beyond supportive. Uh, that's been the biggest part of my success is, is, is the girlfriend, um, my my former wife and I, I still love her to death, and we, we have a great relationship, which I'm which I'm grateful for. Uh, she tolerated it, you know. It was something that she put up with. Um, where where my girlfriend now is like, you know, if it wasn't for her, I honestly don't believe that flying Leathernecks would even be close to what it is. Uh, she's been the driving force, you know, my my biggest supporter, and she's like, hey, if this is what you want to do full time, then then you do it full time and. You know, and I'm going to help you any way I can. So, uh, it, as long as you shut up at the dinner table, right? That, <laughs> as long as you shut up about it at the dinner table. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, you know, we don't. No, we we, we don't. Uh, there's other things we do at the dinner table. Those. Kids. <laughs> 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 no, um, but no, it's it's um, it, it's I, I I truly believe that there are just as many modelers out there that are just as passionate as I, as I am, if not more, uh, they, there's just a lot of guys that, you know, it's, it's their, it's their private hobby and, and they love it just as much as I do. They just, 
they don't they don't talk about it as much as I do. Um, so I think we're all passionate to a degree. Uh, we all love what we do. There's reasons why we do it. And it, it's, it's just, it's really, really nice to be able to, uh, you know, I, I look back at, you know, years ago and, and all of you that have been modeling for, for, for more than, let's see, it's 2022. So more than 17 years, what was it? 95 when the internet, uh, mm -hmm. kind of like really, really like came on board, uh, Prior to that, our only interaction with other modelers was like if we actually went to a, a, a meeting, you know, a model meeting, yeah. you know, or if or if you just happen to run into someone at, at a local hobby shop that, that you know that built models too. Um, and now, you know, God, look at this. We're we're like we're literally like all over the country, and we're able to sit here and talk about something that we all enjoy doing, and it's just. It, it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's a, uh, it's awesome. But uh, thought about putting together anything as far as like a uh, like a like a even an online contest just just for you know shits and grins even. You know, there's there's a couple things that and it's funny that that, <laughs> that my girlfriend and I were talking about. Um, and and let me. <laughs> So it's going to sound kind of weird. We're going to be like, okay, why would you bring that up? Okay, so my 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 wife's name was Tanya, all right, and and my girlfriend's name is Tanya. Okay, so um, yeah, I my my tattoo didn't my tattoo didn't go to waste. So, <laughs> but, so if I ever mention uh, if I ever mention Tanya, I could be referring to either or. But anyways, so. Uh, Tanya, current Tanya, has actually <laughs> suggested that we do something similar like this, where we actually just get on Zoom and and build models. If if anyone mm -hmm. wants to jump in and do that, while while model building for the most part is a individual solitary uh hobby uh it is actually always nice to to kind of just shoot the shit with fellow modelers uh while you're working on stuff so in addition to what i want to do with these with these meetings and and the and when i post them in the broadcast there's going to be a couple things that i want to focus on uh obviously tonight was was supposed to be a discussion about the kinetic prowler. Uh, for the most part, we did that. I, I think we we kind of shut did off. a couple parts. Yeah, we 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 kind of shut off in different directions, but you know, we we covered the kit as much as we could. Uh, so we got that out of the way. Uh, the other thing I want to do is at least once a month, or maybe every six weeks, uh, I want to reach out to a number of different Marines. Uh, and what I want to do with them is I want to do kind of like one-on-one -on -one interviews. And uh, like I mentioned in the introduction video is I've got several friends that are former commanding officers. Um, one of them recently retired. Uh, he was a commanding officer of an F-35 squad. Uh, I've got some that were commanding officers of Harrier squadrons, some that were commanding officers of Prowler squadrons. Um uh, skid squadrons, you know, and I want to, I want to have, I've, I've got several that flew in desert storm. So I want to reach out to them and maybe either once a month or every six weeks, I want to interview one one-on-one -on -one and get a brief history on what led them to become a Marine aviator, what led them to become a Marine officer, and then talk about their experiences while they were in the Marine Corps, uh, get some insight onto maybe two or three of their most uh, memorable missions, whether it was a training or or combat, um, and, and try to just get their their historical take on their career. Okay, so I want to do that. I want to talk every week 
about a different kit, a different subject. And of course, we'll talk about whatever happens to come up in the conversation as well. But Tanya also suggested maybe one week, it's just a model building session. Everybody yeah. just get on. And it's it could either be whatever you're working on, or we could all collectively work on the same kit. It would it would all depend. Now that the chances of everyone wanting to work on the same kit together is is probably low. Yeah. John's like, no, yeah. screw you. I don't want to do that. But no, <laughs> but everyone just it would be nice, like, you know, yeah, you bust out the kit, you got your tools, and you're sitting here working and you're just like just shooting the shit, having having a good, fun conversation with everyone. Um, you know, we can share our 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 brandy choices or our bourbon choices and uh or soda soda choices or water or whatever juice choices whatever you got um you know tell jokes uh talk about the hobby in general um a fam you, know what? you probably heard us talk about that you know with with our club here at pax yeah we, we do that. we 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 try to get it every other month or so someone's house and about 10 or 12 of us we all will go and build and do that exact thing, sit around and build together. See, I would you know, love to do that. Do it on, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where I say that we're fortunate here to have the community. We do uh, to be able to do that. Um, I see. I don't. I, I, but it I, really I does. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow night I'm uh, invited over to my friend, Mark Muller's house and uh, about uh, six or eight of us, are going to be uh, hanging out in his basement uh, building models tomorrow night. Yeah, you know that's. So you guys are uh, you guys are fortunate. Mind. You yeah. guys are fortunate where you have that. Where where yeah. me this 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 is basically my version of what you guys are able to do like personally. Um, yeah, and it's definitely do it then, man. I mean, because people will tune in. People will sit here and you know, I mean, the bench is right there, man. Slap on the camera. <laughs> and, and, no, and, and realistically there could be several guys that are in my position where we don't necessarily have like okay I'll, let me let me backtrack there are a lot of modelers in my area okay and and i don't mean this like in a bad way at all but a lot of them are much older than i am and our interests are completely different from one another and so like i don't even go to the local IPMS meetings. I, I honestly, I've gone to like two and I don't fit in. I just, you know, I, I just, there's, there isn't a connection with, with the guys in the club. Um, there's like one or two that I, I, I don't have a, you know, I engage with fine, but the interest that I have compared to the interest of the other club members and our, our age gap it's just so great that I'm, I've gone and it's just like, yeah, right, yeah. this just isn't fun. Where if we do it this so, way, so we, what you're saying is Pittsburgh was better. No, <laughs> no, I I will tell you, the best club that I ever belonged to was the IPMS chapter at the Chino Plains of Fame Museum when I was in high school back wow. from, 80, from 86 to 88. Okay. Wow. That was yeah. the best chapter that I ever belonged to. Um, I, I got along well with a lot of the guys in Fort Worth. Um, there were some things that happened before I left that left a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, Pittsburgh was a there was nothing really wrong with Pittsburgh. Uh admittedly though, um I got myself into trouble where <laughs> I I allowed the the hobby to interfere with my actual recruiting duties and and uh -oh. I, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit, I'm not afraid to admit that I I I almost lost my career. Uh, on recruiting duty in Pittsburgh, I I came really really close to to, uh. to screwing it all away. 
So yeah, um, I that's had to, not good. <laughs> no, I had to, I had to back away. I had to back away. I kind of yeah, I got a little bit too involved in the hobby, you know, up there in Pittsburgh, and you, you kind of got that freedom where you're not, uh, you know, you're on yeah. the good, yeah. kind of by yourself. You don't have that close supervision. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I kind of almost screwed myself really bad there. Um, I was able to to correct it though and and get back on track. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I came here. I came here to Atlanta, and uh, like I said, I tried going to the meetings. It just just wasn't. I just I just didn't really click with anybody. Um, and the two years that I was yeah, in I, North Carolina, uh, there wasn't any model clubs that I knew of while I was out there. So, uh, you know, and since I've no, been in Florida, even, even now, I don't think there's anything out that way, but uh, is AAA Hobbies still around there? Oh, oh, he closed down years ago. See, we used to yeah. meet, we used to, like, every Saturday it was like, you know, we would go to AAA, and that was kind of like where we'd all just kind of hang around and shoot the shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, as Of course, far he moved as, a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, but as far as getting together with, like, other modelers with, like, my, with, you know, with the same interests and my same age group, like there's really not anybody around here. So if I can do yeah. it over Zoom, that would be fantastic. We're not all in your age group. <laughs> <laughs> well, at like, least some old, of us are. He's like, listen, old man, I don't know about this meat <laughs> shit. <laughs> you got a mouth over there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. right, I'll give you that one. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I'm gonna punch up here, Dave. Good to uh, good to hang and chat with you all, though. Hey, you too. Yeah, like yeah. I, and already, uh, and Andrew, if you uh, make it on Saturday, stop by the uh, table and uh, we'll chat. All right, I'll track you down. It'll be either me or John Burgoon, so. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, man. Hey, ask you know? anybody ask anybody where I'm at. I'll be around. <laughs> gotcha. All right, man. All, All right. right. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night. Well, listen, <clears throat> for the rest of you guys, like I said, yeah, it's already uh it's already ten o'clock. So we'll go yeah. ahead and uh, and we'll wrap this up tonight. Um what I'm gonna do is the, the the plan right now is to get together every Thursday night about the same time. Um, sometime during the week, you know, I'll come up with a new topic. Um, and, and, I, and I'm open to suggestions as well. You know, if, if any of you have any ideas like, hey, let, you know, maybe we could, maybe we could talk about this. Um, and like I said, again, in the post and the, in the introduction video, I want to try to cover a, a wide spectrum of areas. Uh, you know, one week could be paints. Uh, next week could be tools. It could be reference material. It could be a specific kit. It could be just modeling in general. Um, or we could pick a, a subject that isn't necessarily model related, but it ties into the hobby as a whole. Um, I'm more than I'm more than open to suggestions. I, I don't want this just to be like like all my all my ideas and all my input. I, I don't want it to be like that. If, if we're gonna do this as a group, then it I want I would like it to be a collective. Uh, uh, effort, um, and if you say like, "Hey, this week let's let's uh, you know let let's make this the topic," all right, cool. You know, if I haven't come up with an idea yet, and and one of you guys or someone else suggests a topic, then that's what the topic's going to be. So uh, we'll just you know we'll go week to week and and see how it goes. And like I said I'm going to reach out to a lot of Marines and. and have them talk about their uh, their careers and uh, we may even uh, we may even reach out just to individual modelers uh, and you know and get a get a history on some of the more well-known modelers out there uh, and and get their you know get their take on the hobby as a whole how it's how it's transformed since they've been involved in the hobby how they got involved themselves um, you know, and 
and let's just see how this let's see how this yeah. goes. Yeah. Hey, hey Dave, real yes. quick before it's like uh, you uh, cut the feed. Um, so tomorrow night, it's like uh, my friend Mark Muller's place. If I can uh, get his Wi-Fi password, I'll see whether or not I can have you zoom in with us. Okay. Yeah, that that'd be great. Uh, well, let me let me let me talk to uh, let me talk to the girlfriend as well to see make sure she doesn't have any. Yeah. Uh, well, so it's that, like yeah, it's like just let me know. It's like uh, be a messenger. It's like uh, tomorrow afternoon if you're free or not. If you're not, then it's quite all right. My friend okay. uh, does it usually every usually every Friday night, and it used to be uh, kind of a pastime here in Columbus that. Uh, our buddy Walt, who was an ordnance guy in the Air Force for a number of years, um, he would do it in his basement, and he had a big enough setup where he could have like ten people in his basement at one time building. Oh, that's nice. Nice. So, okay. So, just shoot me a shoot me a message tomorrow. All right, I will do. All right, all right gentlemen, right. thank you all for for tuning in. It's been an absolutely fantastic conversation. Um, lots of great topics. Jorge, I appreciate you uh, checking in as well. Um, gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening, and hopefully we'll see you all next week. Sounds all right. good. Take it easy, Dave. Have a good night.